Hi, this is Skip Bayless, and thank you for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I just posted a personal story on my Facebook page. If you want to know what I'm really all about, what makes me tick, what made me me, you should read what I wrote about my upbringing. You should read about how I succeeded in spite of a mean-spirited drunk of a father and a mother who was too interested in herself to ever be much interested in me. You should read about my athletic achievements and my chokes. You'll find my story on my Facebook page. And now, let's get the show started. Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. They've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from Los Angeles. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless, huh. Shannon Sharp. Happy huh. New Year, guys. Yeah. Happy New Happy Year. Happy New Year, Good Jenny. Yeah, the last day. The yeah. last day we can say it. Yeah. After the day you get side-eyed. Dude. Skip, before I go any further, can I... Can I Bear with me, Skip. Yeah, where's your tie today? I had one on, Skip, but I didn't like the way it, oh, it was laid. Really? I had a bow tie. Maybe, oh. maybe it's Happy oh. New Year because you're going to try to outdo me with no tie. No, no, That's no, what's no. happening here. Skip, just give yeah. me a couple of seconds. Yeah. Can, we, can, can we agree with this in 2019? Look, if I'm not special enough for you to individually send me Happy New Year or Merry Christmas, stop group texting me. Do not, Skip, I was in a group text of 50. I didn't ask to be a part of this. I wish I knew who started this group text, this chain. Can we stop this, Skip? I have no idea what you You don't get group about. text? Nope. They, I'm 50. Happy New Year. <laughs> if I'm not special enough to get I, it in I'm not in your group text, nor did I send you nor a group individual text. individual text? Yeah, you didn't send me one. Mm. Where is it at? I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, you, you do have them. completely lost me. No, I haven't. What, you what have is your nothing. point? I don't get your point. I don't. I'm not in your group text. No, I don't want. I don't want to be in anybody's group text, and I want to know uh, why you didn't send me Happy New Year text. Well, I sent you Merry Christmas. I I didn't hear it. back. I didn't hear anything oh. back. So I said. I, I said K. Yeah. yeah. K. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Gosh. I got it. The okay. way these two start their morning. <laughs> uh, we have a lot to get to on today's show. Is Shannon starting to worry about LeBron's health? Never. Mm. And then we've got Skip over here. Maybe mm -hmm. he's going to get on the Eagles bandwagon. Mm. Uh, we'll see who's that quarterback. Plus, Nick Cannon live in studio later. Mm -hmm. But we're going to start in Dallas because Shannon, hey, he's wearing uh, some Cowboys colors. Mm -hmm. They are a slight favorite in their playoff opener Saturday against the Seahawks on Fox. Seattle beat Dallas Early in the season and in that game, Dak Prescott struggled with two picks. He was sacked five times. Ezekiel Elliott rushed for over 100 yards in the loss, and he sat out Sunday's game. But Zeke said yesterday that a lot will be on his shoulders this weekend. Let's take a listen. I feel very good. Uh, you know, normally, you know, after a, a real game week, you know, I'm not really feeling ready to play until about Friday, Saturday. But, uh, you know, I'm ready to go right now. It's hard to make the playoffs in the NFL, and uh, so, I mean, that makes – the moment uh, that much more important, but um, you know, I live for these moments. Uh, I love it. I uh, can't wait to go out there and compete Saturday night. And uh, I think this team is ready. Going into these playoffs, I'm gonna have uh, probably the heaviest workload I've had all season. So uh, just um, great getting fresh and uh, ready going into this this last stretch of the season. Uh, ready for whatever they throw at me. Shannon, who is the more important cowboy, Dak or Zeke? Um, for me, it's always been about Zeke. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want people to get skewed because what they'll do, they'll look at the last game in which uh, mm -hmm. Dak played against the Giants. No Zeke, no Tyron Smith, no Zach mm -hmm. Martin. Played unbelievable. But don't let that skew you mm -hmm. because we remember what transpired last year mm -hmm. when he didn't have Tyron Smith, when mm -hmm. he didn't have Ezekiel Elliott. He didn't look like mm -hmm. he did with the Giants. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's not take one game and over evaluate it, Skip mm. Bayless. I'm talking to you. I, I'm I talking to you. I haven't spoken yet. I know, but I'm, Did I say anything? I'm talking to you. you. You start out saying people will say. People. Don't let it skew you or scare you. Maybe scare you. I said people. Word. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't say people. Yeah. I didn't say more mm. than. I'm mm. talking about you because okay. I know how you think. Yeah. Because sometimes you, we evaluate, we put too much emphasis on one game, and we look at what Dak was able to do against the Giants. And I thought that was the best game that I've ever seen Dak play. And he's had some great games. But I thought this, given the set of circumstances, with no Zeke, with no Tyron Smith, with no Zach Martin, mm. for him to be able to – 
and uh, 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 Coop really didn't get going, but he found a way to get the ball to Jarwin, who mm-hmm. had an unbelievable game. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shannon Michael, Jarwin. His name's Shannon. Whatever, I Skip, renamed ba- him. Whatever, Skip yeah. Bayless. Yep. Uh, Michael Gallup played big. Alan yep. Hearns came up and made some yep. big catches. And so yep. that was great to see. So I thought that was Dak's best game. But let's not get carried away. This is a running football team. Mm. Everything they do and everything they normally do comes off the running game. And that's why if you look at what they were able to do, what they win, Skip, seven of their last eight, mm-hmm. and probably five or six of those games, Zeke was over 100 yards rushing. He was also their leading receiver. Mm-hmm. So let that sink in for just a mm-hmm. second. He led the league in rushing. He's the team's leading receiver. So that lets you know how heavily they rely on Ezekiel mm-hmm. Elliott to, to beat Ezekiel Elliott. Okay. It's not a coincidence, Skip, mm-hmm. that he led the league in rushing mm-hmm. because they de- – they de- Mm-hmm. They depend on him mm-hmm. like the first and the 15th. Mm-hmm. They live game to game, with game, the, to game. like I live paycheck mm-hmm. to paycheck. Interesting. Yep. <laughs> That's what's going on. So, Skip Bayless, I know what you want to do here. I know. I already know what you're going to do. You're going to start out 2019 mm-hmm. just like you left off 2017, 2018. Mm-hmm. Oh, Dak is this. And I'm not taking away anything from Dak. Mm-hmm. But if 2-1 mm-hmm. don't get this thing going, mm-hmm. Y'all going to be in a heap of trouble. Hmm. And I'm going to come in here on, on Monday morning, Skip Bayless. Yep. Hmm. So, I don't care about what happened against the Giants. Yeah, you do. This game. Yeah, you do. That. You know what? I'm going to start over here. I was going to start on this <laughs> side, but I'm going to start over here because this really just flips my switch. Well, what? In, in this game Saturday night, there's this other quarterback named Russell Wilson that you just love. You love think him. he's way up there, maybe even top five for you, right? Well, he had a top five season this year. He had a top year. five season, says Shannon Sharp. Did you hear that? That's on the record, a yep. top five season. He did. Yep. So, Mr. Sharp, yep. Hall of Famer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What team led the National Football League in rushing this year? Seattle. Oh, Seattle did. That's yeah. interesting. Dallas finished in overall rushing 10th in the NFL. Right. Yet you constantly denigrate and discount my quarterback, Dak Prescott, because you say he's completely dependent on his run game that features only Ezekiel Elliott. Only right? who, who led yeah. the league in rushing? Oh, oh, so, but they finished 10th as a team. Seattle finished first as a team, mm-hmm. but Russell Wilson is way up there above Dak. He's like out of Dak's league. Yeah, he is. But he, you, you never discount his performance by saying, well, he leans heavily on his rushing attack, right? Right. I never have heard that one time. That's all I ever hear is that. Dak Prescott is a product of Ezekiel Elliott. If you don't mind me yeah. asking. How, why can't I make the case Russell Wilson is a product of the number one rushing attack in pro football? Because this year? Russell Wilson led the league in touchdown passes last year. Okay. This year, Russell Wilson is 35-7. and seven. Okay. Oh, okay. So I'm going to get to that in just a second. So would you believe that seven times this year, Russell Wilson threw for under 200 yards in a game? Yes. And Dak did that only five times this year. And – Russell Wilson had only one 300-plus yard passing game. Right. Dak had two, but that, that was for 387 and 455. So his two were way better than Russell's one. So why, why so okay. few touchdowns? So, well, I'm getting there. Okay, so, getting there. so Russell Wilson averaged 216 yards passing per game. Eh, not very good, really. Dak actually wound up with 243, which is pretty good. It's like middle of the pack. Mm-hmm. But it's considerably better than Russell Wilson's. Yet I don't hear anything about that. And by the way, Russell Wilson recently won won a game at home with 72 yards passing. If Dak Prescott had won a game with 72 yards passing, I never would have heard the end of it for the rest of the year. Well, he's won a couple of – hold on, Skip. He's won a couple of games with under 100 yards passing when Zeke Elliott ran wild. Well, this year his lowest passing day was 160 yards in a victory over the New York Giants, which was way back in week two when he had nobody to throw to at that point, oh, right? Oh. So, you're right, 35 touchdowns for Russell Wilson, only 22 for Dak. Mm. But um, would you believe that that Dak's uh, – let, let's start with Russell's. Russell's touchdowns averaged 18 yards per touchdown pass. Mm-hmm. Dak averaged 27 yards per touchdown pass, so it was almost 10 yards per throw higher to score the touchdown. Okay. So I don't know. Maybe they get close and Zeke rams it in from three yards. How many w- – would you believe that a third of Russell's touchdown passes came from under 10 yards or, le- 10 yards or less? The ball is yeah. – the, the, Okay. The, the, oh, okay. The, there are the different goal ways to get is it to in. put the ball into the end zone, Mr. Bayless. Okay, so as much as I love Zeke, and you know how much I love Zeke, yes. and I'm so happy he is raring to go and that he got his crucial week of rest, and he should be even hotter than ever, and he owes Seattle because he owes his own team for what he did because he, he dropped a big third down pass that hit him right in the hands at Seattle in that week three loss, and it was a debacle of a loss, and then he, they almost about ready to get back in the game, and he had his biggest run of the game, 26 yards, and fumbled it. 
all the way down on Seattle's 18-yard line. So he cost them twice in that game. So he owes them. And I'm with you. He led the league in rushing yards. He le- led the league in touches. After and, missing the game. And he did. And he led the Cowboys in receptions with 77. Mm. Cole Beasley's 65. Mm. But the bottom line to this discussion is – This team will go only as far as Dak Prescott takes this team. And Dak Prescott has quietly turned into the most underrated quarterback in all of pro football, especially by the man sitting across the table from me. Because do you realize you just sort of just sloughed it off? You you were saying, what did they win like seven of their last eight? Think about that. You've lost track of the fact they won seven of their last eight games. That's pretty impressive, right? Seven and one, the back half of the year. So in those eight games, guess what Dak Prescott has done? If you just take those eight games versus the rest of the quarterbacks in the league, third most completions belong to Dak Prescott. That's in the whole National Football League. Third highest completion percentage, Dak Prescott. Fourth in yards uh, passing over that stretch. Well, th- those are top five numbers. Oh, so, top five. so is it possible that just over the back half of the year when he threw 12 touchdowns to only three interceptions, is it possible that over the last eight games Dak Prescott – was the best quarterback in pro football? No, I can make no, the case. No, you can't make that I, case. I can, because no. he's high, 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 no. high. He's way up third, fourth, third, fourth in all the, the top The great headers. Johnny Cochran couldn't make that case, well, and he's know. one of the best. Yeah, yeah. If you don't mind me asking. So I'm not finished yet. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> you, you can't take my time away because let's just do this. Let's do the 10 Cowboy wins versus the six losses. If you want value, if you want value in the 10 wins, Dak Prescott threw 17 touchdown passes to two interceptions. Is that good? Yeah. That, that's driving force of those 10 wins. He averaged 262 yards passing in those and had a QBR of 71. That's in the 10 wins. Now let's look at the six losses. Hmm. He had five touchdowns to six interceptions. He threw for only 211 yards a game, and his QBR was all the way down at 30 in six losses. So 71 QBR in the 10 wins, 30 in the six losses. Yeah. It just shows you that the quarterback – is more valuable than running back. If, if, in, 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 if for nothing else, the, the position is so much more valuable, and he was playing the position at a top five what, level over the last and half that's what gets teams in trouble because they value that position and mm-hmm. they put anybody in that position and says, well, you know what, if we pay a case can't somebody, find anybody. Let me ask you this, Skip Bayless. Take out the last game Zeke didn't play. Where mm-hmm. was Zeke in rush yards in those wins? over those last seven games. He was good. He was yeah. just over 100, 103 yards. Yeah, led the league, okay. right? Okay. That led the league, right? right. That wasn't third. Right. That was leading the league in this, rushing. This is in an era in which most teams don't really feature one runner. So that, that lets you. So that should mm. let you know, Skip mm. Bayless, in a league that's pass happy, mm. that they've catered every time thing to throwing the football, Ezekiel Elliott in a passing league mm. over the last six or seven games mm-hmm. – had over 600 yards running the football. Why is that, Skip? Mm. Well, it's because the quarterback was completing a lot of passes that opened up the run game. Oh, really? That's what it was? And obviously, over the first half of the season, Dak Prescott had nobody who could consistently separate at the wide receiver position. Am I right about that? Yes, I'll give you that. So that's why the, the numbers start to skyrocket as he finally has one capable wide receiver who can actually challenge double teams and make the defensive coordinator say, I've got to account for number 19. It also helps that you mm-hmm. have that number 19 mm-hmm. that can help lift that safety, that eighth guy down in the box to get so him up out of there. that made it, more, made it easier for Zeke to go for 103 a game. Because guess what they say mm-hmm. in Skip Bayless? Mm-hmm. We are not going to let Zeke Elliott run the football. Mm-hmm. We don't care who you have at quarterback. Mm-hmm. Because we don't feel he mm. can beat us throwing the football. Mm. But we know if we let that 2-1 start eating mm. and getting up and pointing first down, it's going to be a long day for us. Mm. So, so once again, one. you have uttered that phrase, the quarterback who can't throw the football. I yet, didn't say yet in the throw. 10 wins, 17 touchdowns, only two interceptions. That's throwing the football pretty well to me. And I enlightened you on Monday with two little numbers I'm going to throw back at you again. What? Over Dak's first three years in the league, his completion percentage is the highest for anybody in their first three years in the league in the history of pro football. And that's the guy who is, quote, unquote, not accurate. That's the guy who cannot throw, right? I never said he couldn't throw. Okay. Well, you said he's not accurate. So how can you lead the world in completion percentage over your first oh, three years? Oh, I'm the only one that said that? 
Well, no, I'm saying. Okay, okay I'm asking anybody. I didn't yeah. ask you. I'm asking the world. Okay, what you want me to ask? Because he led, I'm a, led I'm the, the world in completion man. percentage. He's 66.1%. No quarterback in the history of the league in his first three years in the league has had a higher completion percentage than that. How can you do that and not be somewhat accurate? Oh, if you don't mind me asking. Right. He led in completion percentage. Mm-hmm. But what about win percentage and touchdown percentage? Did he lead in that? Well, he's pretty high in win No, I don't know about high. 13 and 3, 9 and 7, 10 and 6. That's, that's well, pretty great. Won the division twice if, out of three years. If you don't years. mind me asking, what was well, Russell Wilson? I don't know. You I, don't I didn't know. know we were comparing that. Yeah, but you, you keep saying. Well, you, I, I just said that philosophically, you never dock Russell Wilson for having the number one rushing attack. You just boost him. You say he's the greatest. But, Skip, when you have the number one running attack and you throw for 20 touchdowns, mm-hmm. what is he doing that's special? Russell, you told me Russell Wilson has the number one running attack, but he's throwing for 35 yards. We're gonna Touchdowns. Get, we're going to get yeah. to a quarterback later, Jenny, mm. who had the number five rushing offense, who didn't reach his incentives. But we're not talking about that right now, but we're mm. talking about that a little later. Mm. Yeah, you mm. mm, you going to really mm. – So now I'm going to talk about the other little stat, little nugget that I what threw at you on Monday, and that is that – I don't know how this happened, but Dak Prescott over the last three years has the most game-winning drives in the fourth quarter and overtime in all of pro football. All of pro football. This quarterback who can't throw and is not accurate has that many game-winning drives. He has the most. He has the most, but let me ask you a question. How is that possible? Over the last three years, does he have the most wins? Mm. Well, I just told you. I don't know. I haven't added him up versus the rest of He probably didn't have as many as Tom Brady. What? Brady's the greatest winner in the history of pro football. Well, is he not? You know what? And you know what? Tom Brady didn't have nearly as much to work with as even Dak Prescott had to work with this year. And somehow he should have been the one seed. So there we go. Don't do that, Skip. Well, I just did it. No, you you (laughs) should should do it. We're not going to start off 2019. Uh Like I said, we're going to get to him a little later. And you're not going to like what I have to say. But back to Dak Prescott, Mm -hmm. Skip. Every time I turn around, you try to you try to heighten Dak importance while minimizing I, I'm not, Ezekiel I, Elliott. I'm not heightening. I'm just showing you he's the most underrated quarterback in pro football because so many people dug in uh, d- deciding he just can't play. He's a fourth-round draft choice, and that's what he should have been, a fourth-round draft choice. No. That's all I ever hear. And all he keeps doing is proving you wronger and wronger and wronger. As time goes on, he looks better and but better this is and what better. I this is what I don't understand. Now, you made the case for the last year that it was the six-game suspension and the threat of the suspension that was hanging over the Cowboys' head. Well, it hurt him. Why did it hurt him if Dak is your quarterback, if he's that guy? That should be well, – that, that would hurt be, any team. Why? No, it wouldn't. Because from week to week, the running back was having to be in court all over the country. What they got to do with – Having to be in court in, in what, Dallas and in court in New York. I guess and after w- a while, it just wears out the whole football That should have wore on – Is he or is he not? That should have wore on Zeke. Mm-hmm. Dak wasn't in court mm-hmm. in Texas, in New York. How well, did that well, affect I told Dak you. if he's that guy? Okay, so last year, Dak Prescott had the fourth best QBR in all of pro football. That's pretty great. He had third best when he was the rookie. Yes. And that was only because he didn't play the last game. He played a series or two. Yes. And it crippled his QBR in mm-hmm. the last game and knocked him down to third because he led the whole year as a rookie. That's hard to do. He had the greatest rookie season any rookie quarterback has ever had, including RG3 that rookie year in Washington. I've never seen a better one than that. And he plummeted all the way from third to fourth in QBR last year. And they went 9-7 and seven and finished one game out of the playoffs. Okay, they were out of the playoffs. Okay. So I don't so, know if it's so, one game, well, two Well, I'm games, just saying, and they out. lost Zeke for six games. And I'm not oh, discounting. Well, 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 no, no, that shouldn't matter. Well, 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 that shouldn't well, matter. Well, Losing you have Zeke to have, for six games doesn't matter. You have to have a semblance of a running game. Russell Wilson certainly has a semblance. He's got the best one. What about last right? year when Russell was running for his life and had nothing okay. and still with led the NFL in touchdown passes? All right. He's really good. And okay, I'm not then. discounting him. Yes, I'm just you saying, are. You never – ever mention the fact that he's got the number one rush. That's all everybody did when he had beast mode. Mm. They never gave him the credit. Mm. Everybody talk about he, anybody can do that when you got beast mode. Mm. And so now he didn't have beast mode. Mm. Now they're in rebuild and he still got this team to the playoffs. So you're singing the praises of Russell Wilson, but on that fateful day, on that fateful play at the end of that Super Bowl after the 2014 yes. season, you said the ball has to go to beast mode. It should have. Right? Yes. Well, Russell Wilson's the magic man. I think you can make a case he should have thrown the ball. No, he should not. First of yeah. all, they should have. Listen, Russell did. Russell was a good soldier. He did. He he ran the play that was called. Mm-hmm. That's not. Look, it happened. They've moved on. They never recover from that. But when was the last time? If I'm not mistaken, Dallas hadn't been in rebuilding since when, Skip? 
okay, Russell Wilson's in a rebuild. Did anybody expect them to be here? Nope, I'll give you that. Okay, then. And nope. why are they here? If they didn't have Russell Wilson. Sure, he without... was really good. Uh, no, 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 he no, also no. had the number one rushing attack. Did anybody see that coming? Skip, they, it I didn't. It wasn't like they were, look, look at that offensive line. Mm-hmm. You, let me ask you a question. Mm-hmm. You think, would the Cowboys be better or worse if Russell Wilson was their quarterback instead of Dak? And would Seattle be better or worse if Dak was their quarterback? Right now, Dallas? Right now! I would say Dallas would be a little better with Dak than Russell Wilson. Skip, you out your mind. he's a better mind. fit. No? Skip, you out your mind. I, I, listen, you, you're not getting the intangibles. He is the leader of this team. What do you think Russell Wilson is? I don't know because that locker room got really split. I, I think if we could put lie detectors right now on Richard Sherman yes. or an, an, any of so those Legion of Boomers, they'd say, hey – uh, the leader of that team was not Russell Wilson okay. because we didn't like Russell okay, Wilson. Get, Have you ever heard anybody say they didn't like Dak Prescott? Did. This team loves Dak they, Prescott. It is not skip, split skip. over offense versus defense. And I get the you, defense loves Russell. Think of, loves so, so Dak Prescott. That in. defense hated Russell Wilson a and defense, hated that that Pete Carroll loved Russell Wilson to let, a fault. So let that sink in. When you got half the guys mm-hmm. that's pulling against mm-hmm. Russell, mm-hmm. he's still able to lead the He's league really in good. touchdown passes, nope. even when everybody, even on his own team, is not standing in his corner. And for you to sit across from me yep. and to say the Cowboys would be in better shape if uh, uh, if Dak, instead of Russell, was their quarterback, Skip, is just laughable. No, it's not laughable. I just explained to so you. So, in other words, you're saying Seattle Dak is, doesn't love that quarterback. Oh, no, 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 no. They got the guys out of that locker room that didn't love that quarterback. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure about the defenders who are left there. Bobby Wagner. You don't think Bobby loves it? Sure. I believe they love him. And they know. guess what they did? Not only are they remaking mm-hmm. the team, mm-hmm. they're remaking the team in Russell Wilson's image. Mm-hmm. That's what happens. That's what's about to happen so, in Pittsburgh. And it's oh, okay. Just, we were not talking about Pittsburgh. I don't, I don't we're talking about saying. so in other words, so in other words, well, I'll you, take my quarterback. I'll take so him. I'll you, take him Saturday I, I, night. I'm just trying to I'm just, just for my clarification. He is the it. alpha in this locker room. He is the leader. He is he is so the Russell reason Wilson, they are he, here. So, no, I give you that. But if you switch him, I will just on intangibles, I'm gonna take my guy. What? Let me, my me, guy is loved more by my team no, 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 than he's loved by his team. No, I don't care about it. Let me ask you let me ask you So let me ask you a question. Are you saying that Dak Prescott has better intangibles than Russell Wilson? Mm-hmm. I'm saying that. What intangibles? I can back that up. What? Leadership. Huh? Leadership. Skip. Or playmaking. I just Skip. gave you the numbers over the last eight games. Dak Prescott has played at a higher level than Russell Wilson over the last eight games. Russell Wilson had a 72-yard passing game. Well, what do you do with Skip. that? Skip. Help me out. What do you do with it? Did they win? No, seriously. They won. Okay, it is. That's okay. what I do with it. Because they, they lead the league in rushing. He came to my restaurant. Uh, Skip, let me ask you a question. Yeah. All I know is this. I don't know what type of leader Russell Wilson is. Oh, but I... I that's a rhetorical mm. question. I do know what type of leader mm. is. All I know is in his second year, he went to the Super Bowl. Mm. And in his third year, he went back to the Super Bowl. Okay. So I don't know if you can be a bad leader and do and that. And in those years, he had the best defense in pro football. Whoa, 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 whoa. Right? Whoa. One of the, the best defenses in the history and of pro even, football. Am I right? In his first three Thank years, you. he Thank had you. beast mode. Oh. He had a top three, top four oh. rushing attack all those years. So and he, he had never top got three, the top four, and he had number one in defense. Well, it seems like maybe the quarterback went along for a great ride. Oh, uh-huh. thank right. you for that. Hey, Cadillac Appreciate right now. That. Cadillac, yeah. your quarterback going along for a great ride. I just gave you the numbers. You, the last de- eight games, I, I'm not sure anybody's been better the last your eight defense, games. Your defense top four. You know, you keep overlooking this, yeah. and, and it's going to I ain't overlooking. It's going to no. cost you way more due. No, it's not. Yeah. Oh, Russell. Yeah. I can't even believe that you would say that. Did you fix your mouth to say ru- that did. Dak Prescott's a better quarterback than Russell? I just backed it up. No, you didn't. You couldn't back up No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Yep. Nobody, because mm-hmm. Skip, nobody mm-hmm. outside of you and Jerry Jones think Dak Prescott is a better quarterback than Russell Wilson. Mm-hmm. I just There's said not- he's a better fit for the team. They love this guy. Skip, what can this he do? He goes one? as he goes. Skip, Skip, you don't mind me asking. He just went, they what? won seven of eight games. One thing, one Did one Russell Wilson just win seven of eight games? They barely beat Arizona last Sunday. They barely beat him. Skip. They were behind, and he pulled it out. Oh! Yeah. A game-winning drive, huh? Uh, well, oh, man, you get a game-winning drive. Who has the most? Oh, game-winning drive. Who has the most? Oh, game-winning. The true. most over the last three years belongs to Dak you Prescott. You know why they got You just down keep down. overlooking you this. You know why they got so many Because you dug in, and you look wronger you, and wronger. You know why they, You're looking wrong. You know why he has so many game-winning I'm drives? I'm sorry. I'm because sorry. he put him in that situation. Yeah. They shouldn't be behind to begin with. Yep. We're going to break down Dak, other quarterbacks later in the show. But for now. 
We're oh, going to no. leave no. it. There is a mess, guys, in mm -hmm. Pittsburgh right now. Is mm -hmm. Antonio Brown done as a Steeler? We'll discuss mm. what's going on next. Mm. No mercy. CBS Sports reports Antonio Brown has requested a trade from the Steelers and that he has issues with Ben Roethlisberger and Mike Tomlin. This comes on the heels of reports that A.B. threw a football at Big Ben at practice last Wednesday, then skipped practice the rest of the week. A.B. was inactive for Sunday's game and left at halftime. Yesterday, Big Ben was asked about any friction with his star receiver, Let's hear it. That's the kind of baffling thing to me is people are making a big deal about a walkthrough on Wednesday that there was a blow-up, a fight between he and I. I don't know anything about that. If there was a blow-up or something, I sure as heck didn't see it. You know, it's, it's this big deal was made about that, and I, I don't, I'm not really sure where that, where that comes from. Ben, how is this going to play in the locker room? And i got to wonder, how does he come back into that locker room? Yeah, you know, each guy's got to answer that question on their own. Like I said, I'm blessed to play with him, and I consider him one of my closer friends, obviously Pouncey and Ramon, but A.B. and I have been together for a long time. I owe so much of my success to him. Each guy has to, like I said, answer that question, and I know guys are frustrated. I think the biggest thing is I know some of the guys that I've talked to, just they're trying to reach out to him. They haven't heard back. So I think that's what's frustrating to a lot of guys. All right, Shannon, who is most to blame for this drama in Pittsburgh? Uh, Skip, I think there's enough blame to go around, but let's start with A.B. Because A.B. needs to be professional. Mm. Skip, now you remember now, after the Kansas City game, they won. Mm -hmm. Mike Tomlin had given his, his speech after game speech. Antonio mm -hmm. Brown is Facebook Live. Yep. Mm. I immediately came in the next day. I said they need to get mm -hmm. rid of Antonio Brown. I said because he's going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. You see, <clears throat> the problem the crooks of what's going on in Pittsburgh, Skip, Skip, from what I can see, is that the two best players are the worst leaders. Hmm. Ben Roethlisberger and Antonio Brown. Therein lies the problem. Mm -hmm. This is a very divided, selfish, finger-pointing team mm -hmm. in that maybe in the history, not, you know, you got to go back, but I'm saying since I've played mm -hmm. and been covering the league, yep. so 20-plus years, yep. I've never seen anything like this. When Antonio Brown did what he did with the Facebook Live, Mike Tomlin wanted to win so bad that all he gave him was a slap on the wrist. Mm -hmm. So in other words, what he did is that he encouraged negative behavior. It also showed me that Antonio Brown had a lack of respect for Mike Tomlin. Mm -hmm. Because, Skip, those, when the coach after the game or pregame, mm -hmm. those are sacred. Yep. What is said is never to supposed to leave those walls. Mm -hmm. Not only did it leave the walls, Skip, it's live. Yep. Antonio Brown didn't care anything about what Mike Tomlin was. It was about him. Mm -hmm. Told you he was selfish from the beginning with. Now, Ben says, you know, everybody's making a big deal out of walkthrough practice. Okay, if it's such a big deal, why do you want to repeat the play? Why do you keep repeating it if it's such a big deal? If See, that's true that he did. Exactly. Well, well let, let Ben tell it nothing happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> tell, let everybody say, everybody. Mike Tomlin, Ben, A.B. said, oh, everybody's making a big deal. No, mm -hmm. Skip Bayless. No, mm -hmm. no, 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 no. Yep. We saw this last year with the anthem. Mm -hmm. They said, now James Harrison, who was on the team at the time, saw it right here and said, what we had decided to do, we were going to stay in. Then all of a sudden, no, we're going to be in the tunnel. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, one guy needed to stand so he could see the flag. While the coaches go stand on the sideline. Hold on, I thought we decided that we were going to stay in the locker room. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden, so see, we're not united as we previously thought. You see, Skip, the most important game of the Pittsburgh Steelers season didn't matter to Antonio Brown. What mattered to Antonio Brown was Antonio Brown. Mm -hmm. Selfish. See, it, 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 Antonio said, I just want to win. You know, I just want to win. You know, we got that soft spoken voice, I just want to win. No, you don't. You want to win, but you need 12 catches. You need a buck 50 and two touchdowns. Yep. What bothered Antonio Brown the most, Skip Bayless? Let me take, put it to you in a nutshell. See, he, had, he experienced something that mm -hmm. Julio Jones didn't experience. He experienced something that Mike Evans, true number one receivers, mm -hmm. with their robbing the second receiver, mm -hmm. leading the team in catches mm -hmm. and yarding. Yep. That's what bothered him. Yep. That's the problem that he got with it, Big Ben. Because Big Ben is showing somebody else some love. Mm -hmm. Hold on, wait a minute. If I'm the guy, you see, Skip, if Antonio, now this didn't just happen. You think Antonio Brown all of a sudden said, you know what? I'm just going to miss practice today. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Skip, it's kind of like drugs. Very few people just start with the hard stuff. You start with the little stuff. Maybe a little alcohol here, maybe a little weed there. Then you mm -hmm. try, you know, it's a gateway to something more potential. Antonio Brown just didn't say all of a sudden, I'm not coming to practice one day. Mm -hmm. It was 
Something may tick them off. They well, didn't I say this was the third A wall of this season? Uh, mm. uh. No, mm. but it mm. goes back. He started walking out of practice. He started missing meetings way before. Mm -hmm. And then you gave him security with that long-term deal, Skip. Mm -hmm. Skip, if he remember I told you, Skip, money don't change who you are. It makes you more of what you already are. So if you a jerk and you ain't got no money, you become a gaping you know what mm -hmm. if you get some money. So Antonio Brown, Skip, he's mm -hmm. not gonna get any better. If I'm the Steelers, I'm looking to move him. I got to. Okay, he ain't being that, that, be together. It's going to cost you twenty one point one million in dead money. No, 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 no. I'm not saying. I'm not saying no. cut him. I'm saying move him. No, I'm saying you still. Him. You still have dead money. I, I don't care. Well, Skip. I mean, you had that guaranteed money that you gave him. You you gave him nineteen million guaranteed. Skip, what good is that? I didn't make the playoffs with him. I'm not winning championships with him. That's a fact. So what good is he doing me? Well, He's causing a disturbance. My two best players are the worst leaders. Mm -hmm. Ben Roethlisberger might be an all-time worst leader at that position. Mm -hmm. Antonio Brown is a horrible leader because he's selfish. Yep. And everybody knows he's selfish. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And Mike Tomlin bears some culpability he because does. he didn't drop the hammer sure. on Antonio Brown. Yep. He started getting out of line. So, to your point. I was with you when you said you cannot pay this man mm -hmm. after the 2016 season. In fact, we had Antonio on the show at the Super Bowl yeah. in Houston. Oh, wow. yeah. And to your credit, you faced up to him. And to his credit, he faced up to you and to us. Mm -hmm. And he gave his side of the story. And you stood by yours. I stood by mine. And we both agreed you cannot make your bed with him. Because if you make your bed, as they say, you're going to have to lie in that bed. Exactly. And they gave him, they went ahead and gave him $19 million guaranteed, and they gave him four years, $68 million. It's just too much money. And the same thing happened a year later with Odell. Mm -hmm. And I said, you cannot pay him that much money because he will turn out to be more trouble than he's worth mm -hmm. at that position. Absolutely. If they're quarterbacks you might want to try to live with it because it's harder to find that guy, right. and that's a more valuable position. Oh, you're not getting position, off the beam. Right, right. No, you're not. So you just have to live with all of his finger-pointing and between the lines. And retiring and unretiring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you just have to put up with it because, once again, Ben put up really good numbers this year, and he's hard to find. He's hard to replace. Antonio's not easy to replace, but much easier to replace than the quarterback, when right? the last time one of those guys won a, was on a Super Bowl winning team? The, which guys? Uh, and Antonio Brown. No, you just uh, uh, number one, a true number don't. one. Odell, Antonio, they're the same mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. And what is, they're both creations of this social media age we live in mm -hmm. because it made both of them, the social media feedback they get, makes both of them believe they're like NBA superstars. Actually. They're bigger than the team. Absolutely. And the problem is true. they act like basketball stars, but they play football. And they play a position in football that you played in effect, a receiver position, where you cannot control your destiny yeah. at that position. You play right? a dependent position. Very dependent because you're either going to get your targets or not and it's going to depend on a whole lot of different variables that you cannot control correct they can take you out of the game if they the defense can they can put three people on you they can just say ben you can't have him today right yep, yep. and then antonio and juju said, thank you thank you juju <laughs> and juju as you pointed out led the team in catches and receptions whoa whoa, whoa, whoa wait a second catches really and yards. yeah and yards yeah, yeah. so the point is that in basketball it's different because you can't stop LeBron or Russell Westbrook. Right. They can bring the ball up the floor, right? right? So yes. they're getting their touches. They're actually going touch, 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 touch. They're yeah. drilling it all the way yes. up the floor. And then they can choose to attack the basket. They can, they can hold the ball up. for 24 they, seconds. They can do whatever baby. they want. They can pull up and shoot a three from 35 feet away. Absolutely. And it's hard to defend that because right. you can't stop their touches. So the point is... Antonio Brown has become more trouble than he's worth. So if we say, who do you blame? Well, I got to go to the top. Art Rooney. I mean, he, somebody had to, the buck had to stop on oh, somebody's Oh, yeah, he gave desk. it to him, yeah. Okay, yeah. Art Rooney had said, not pay him, okay? Yeah. And Kevin Colbert, the GM, had to say, yep, we're going to pay mm -hmm. him. And Mike Tomlin, he deserves some blame, especially if he voted yes on yeah. let's give him his money. Yeah. And I'm assuming Mike would have input into that. Well, I'm right? sure he does, Kev, but what, what I hold Mike Tomlin couple before, because when he started mm -hmm. missing these meetings, yep. and he started skipping out on meetings and walking out of practice, Yep. No, you got to come down with you, harsh you just, punishment, Skip. You just do. Set him down. Take some of his money. And I've always applauded Mike for being the ultimate players coach, but that can go completely over the edge into the biggest negative in pro football because the best players coach in pro football became the worst coach as far as ha controlling his locker room. Skip, right? I'm trying to figure out, in all my years, mm -hmm. Skip, you play pro football. How in the hell you don't show up for work? Mm.
when nothing even skip I've well, been protesting. Skip, he's, he I've wants been, out. There have been times I was yep. sick as a dog. Yep. I called Greek. I said, Greek, man, I don't feel mm -hmm. good. Greek was the uh, athletic mm -hmm. trainer for the yep. Bronco. He said, Shannon, come on in. We got medicine <laughs> on, in these tables. Yep. So I would come in and lay on the table, Skip Baylor. How you don't show up the, the most important game, week 16, you need to win this game. And if Baltimore loses, Skip, mm. you're in the playoffs. But if Baltimore loses in the final two, it, and you lose in the two teams tied, Tennessee and, and yep. any tie, you still get to the playoffs. And what happened in that game, by the way? Almost. Pittsburgh won, won the, game the game. Without Andrew. With Antonio Brown. What does that tell you? Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Huh. Mike Tomlin. At who, who do we see on the field, like, like pleading for, for Baker watching. Mayfield to pull it off? It was Juju, right? Watching. Yeah. Watching the game on the jumbo yeah. trying yeah. to see if they made the playoff. Yeah. And where was Antonio Brown? Mm. Supposedly your best, one of your best mm -hmm. players. Supposedly one of your leaders. Yep. And where is he, Skip? Mm. Nowhere to be seen. Mm -hmm. So he told you, uh, Mike Pouncey, mm -hmm. Ruben Foster, Bill in the Waver, all you got. He told you what he thought of you. Mm -hmm. It was never about you. Y'all, Oh, y'all thought y'all was in this together? This was never mm -hmm. about you. Yep. It's always been about him. Mm -hmm. And there lies the problem. Mm -hmm. And you see, this is always going to be a problem. Mike Tomlin, I hold you so culpable for this mm -hmm. because you reinforce negative behavior. That's something you never, I don't care what it is, Skip. Mm -hmm. You don't do that. If a child goes in the store, Skip, mm -hmm. and he starts pitching a, or he or she starts pitching a fit, Mm -hmm. You give them ice cream, you give them a candy. That is true. Now yeah. you reinforce, this is what I need to do to get your attention, to give yep. me what I want. Mm -hmm. So when he did Facebook Live, I don't care if I lost 100 or nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm sending a message. Mm -hmm. Skip, where mm -hmm. did they do this at? Mm -hmm. I, can't ima I couldn't even imagine mm -hmm. doing that to my teammates. Yep. The most, one of the most important games of my career. So. I will get upset. And not show up to work. So what do we see late in the season from the Pittsburgh Steelers? We saw a collapse. Okay, but we saw against New England, we saw the best of what this team could be, right? And we saw at New Orleans, in large part, we saw the best of what the Steelers could be at New Orleans because it went down to the bitter end, yes. right? Yes. Juju was the guy who actually lost the football Correct. at the end. Yeah. But those two games actually, in the big picture, became an indictment of this team because you could see what they could be. Yes. And now we see what they are not. They're and now out we of the playoffs. And we see now why. Now we see see all that yep. stuff. Oh, that's outside noise. You know, yep. every, that's mm -hmm. outside noise. Mm -hmm. I don't have a, you know, Antonio, I don't have a problem with being calling me out, being said out. Everybody's going to say the right thing publicly. Mm. Skip, that public place and that private life are entirely two different things. And we see the public is, the private is starting to become public. Yep. Now, I just want everybody to know, Skip, if you trade for Antonio Brown, mm -hmm. you know what you're getting. Yeah. If I buy a Ferrari, I'm expecting to get a nice sports mm -hmm. car that's supposed to be driven at a high rate of speed. Mm -hmm. So if you purchase a snake, don't think you're getting a Labrador Retriever. Mm. Antonio Brown is what he is. So don't think because he's going to change locker rooms, he's going to change who he is. Mm -mm. So you're fooling yourself now if you think, oh, you he, we get it. Oh, yeah, he's going to change. I'm no, just not, not sure what anybody would, would trade for him, what yeah. they would offer up for him. I'm not sure what his market would be given his off-the-field issues. Especially right? knowing this. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. also the yeah. year he had. So it, yeah. it's hard to really want to sign on to the guy. But when you're watching the playoffs from home for the first time in five years, mm -hmm. uh, they're going to want to make some changes. Mm -hmm. No mercy. So next up, Tom Brady was the fifth best quarterback. Fifth best quarterback in the NFL this season, according to Pro Football Focus. Brady's Patriots have a first round bye, but his season has not been what we're used to seeing. Brady also missed out on $5 million in contract incentives since he didn't finish in the top five in the most important passing category. What? Yeah, but uh, Brady was one spot ahead of Aaron Rodgers in the pro football focus rankings. Rodgers missed the playoffs, but he only threw two interceptions all year. So, Shannon, are you surprised Brady is uh, fifth? I say what? Number five? This is laughable. <laughs> this is an absolute joke. <laughs> this is an abomination. So let me get this straight. Which is? <laughs> yeah, which part? Yeah. Tom Brady being in the top five. Really? Yes. Hmm. So let me get this straight. The team mm -hmm. doesn't think he's top five. That's what the team say. Because the team had incentives. Okay, if you finish top five in completion percentage, yards per attempt, or passer rating, you know, touchdown. Jenny, you notice they didn't use QBR? I wonder why. That is <laughs> I wonder why. Mm. You know what? 
They use pass maybe, or rape. Maybe because they're afraid. No, 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 no. Yeah. no, no hold on, Skip. It's not your they're turn. They're afraid. I didn't ask you. They, Why are you talking? They just give him one. Whoa. Right? I, I'm trying to figure out. Mm. Hold on. Did I mm. skip anything? No, I didn't. You bring up QBR. Yeah. You well, you put your shot. I don't know. I put it right That wasn't no shot. That was a dunk. Now I don't take shots. That's a dunk. dunked right back in your face. Hold on. At some point in time, mm -hmm. we're going to have to stop evaluating Tom Brady on what he did in the past. Mm. Jenny, nobody skip. Nobody's mm. trying to take away those five Super Bowls. Nobody's mm. trying to take away those eight appearances. Mm. Nobody's trying to take away what he's accomplished. Mm -hmm. But in 2018, he didn't have a better year. Okay, he's top five. You think he had a better year than Andrew Luck, Russell Wilson, Phillip Rivers, Jared Goff? Really? Do we think that? Do I get to answer now? No, oh. not yet. When it's your turn, you can answer. But that's my turn. Mm. Not yet. No. Jenny, I'm so just Because what's going to happen, let me tell you what he's going to see. This is what's going to happen, and this is what people do. Everybody, mm. but he won five Super Bowls. No, we're not talking about that. 2018. Oh, but his team played so well. Okay, Phillip Rivers' team was 12-4, and four, mm. which was better mm. than Tom Brady's. He mm. threw more touchdowns than Tom Brady. Mm. More. Mm. All that. Mm. Come on, man. Uh, Andrew Luck was 39 touchdowns, mm. made the playoffs. Uh, uh, Phillip Rivers. 35 touchdowns, mm. made the playoffs 12 and 4. Mm. Russell Wilson, 35 and 7, made the playoffs. Really, Skip? Mm -hmm. The eye test. Now, seventh in passing yards, 18th in completion percentage, mm. 13th in yards per attempt, 12th mm. in passer rating. Not that QBR, that old bump stat, mm. but anyway, 12, 10th in TD passes. Mm. And he got top five off of what? Mm. Because you know what they did? They go back, oh, he won five Super Bowls. Mm. Oh, he's the greatest quarterback ever. Not in 2018, he was a... Uh... Mm. Mm. You finished? I rest my case. Thank you. Now it's my <laughs> turn to debunk everything you just said, you which I'm about to do. So I respect Pro Football Focus because they actually break down tape in ways you cannot break down tape because you don't have it. You watch TV like I do, and you break down what you see on television. Mm -hmm. But Pro Football Focus has a lot of ex-NFL people, and as a, by committee, they break down play, play, play. Every play that Tom Brady played and all the quarterbacks played, mm -hmm. they give each play a grade, and it adds up to this, that he finished with the fifth highest grade of all the Pro Football Focus Committee's research into his season that he just played in 2018. Okay. It had nothing to do with 2017 or 16 or 2001. I don't believe it. Nothing. Nothing to do. Well, okay, so you're saying they're corrupt or whatever you say they are. They're all wrong. Like they, they don't know anything, right? So if you I want, didn't say they don't know anything. Okay, I'm right. saying they're biased. Okay, so you're ripping the stat called QBR, which takes into a, in, to impact everything the quarterback does in the game, including running with his legs, what? you know, running for yards. So he should be docked. Yeah. Did okay. you, hold on. So what does passer rating take into account? Just throwing the football. Okay, that's what a quarterback does. Story. That what QBR do. takes into to account situational football. How how did you do on third down? How did you do on key downs? Did mm -hmm. you make the key plays? And they have a, a d very complex formula that adds up to this number. And well, it's a better number than the passer. Well, rating. Cl clearly the mm -hmm. Patriots didn't like it mm -hmm. because it's too arbitrary. Mm -hmm. They said, "Nah, we're gonna do passer rating." Okay. And so, what was this passer rating? Skip better you, my man. Yeah. I, well, tell me, I don't, I don't really it care. It wasn't top five. All I know is I don't care what happened before 2018. I only care about 2018. And, and Tom Brady had his greatest season ever in 2018. Really? And I don't even care about their, break, their film breakdown, how they came to top five. All I know, it was his greatest achievement of his whole career, and it's the greatest quarterback career in the history of pro football. See? And See? you have to look at the overall impact and the degree of difficulty because I'm going to tell you one. What's you, so hard you actually, the FC East? You, you, you actually agreed with me on this. Bill Belichick provided the worst defense he's ever provided Tom Brady in their 19 years together. This was the worst. And Bill Belichick eventually provided Tom Brady with the worst receiving core he's had in any of his 19 seasons in the National Football League. And you agreed with me on this last week on both accounts, right? Am I right about that? Wait, because this year, was there a Brandon Cooks? No. Danny Amendola? No. Uh, Martellus Bennett? No. Malcolm Mitchell? No. Deion Lewis? No. All gone in camp. They try Eric Decker. And then they try my guy Jordan Matthews from Vanderbilt. And then they try Kenny Britt. Cut, cut, cut. And then what happened? Julian Edelman was gone for the first four games, and only in the last two weeks have I seen him reestablish a little bit of the burst he used to have. And that's what Tom Brady had to deal with all year long. 
you, you, by your account, you're the Hall of Famer tight end. Mm -hmm. You said Rob Gronkowski has hit the wall, yeah. shell of self. He's still hurt. Can't run, can't jump, nope. doesn't want to take nope. a hit anymore. Hands are going bad because he's flinching. So that's become a liability at the tight end position, right? Yeah. And you talk about their running game. Would you say they finished fifth in the league oh. overall? But wait, 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 but wait a second. Guess what? They finished 20th in yards per rush. Is that good? No, no, no. No, no. that's not good. So that doesn't really help you. When you're 20th in yards per rush, that means you keep handing off, handing off, handing off, and you're going nowhere fast. Does that help him? Yet, despite everything I just said, Without the Miami miracle, or we should call it debacle, the last play of the game at Miami, Tom's house of horrors where he played his best game of the year with 358 yards passing and three touchdowns and no interceptions. Without that last crazy play allowed in large part by Bill Belichick, he bears the most responsibility, said the Hall of Famer Shannon yes, Sharp. Absolutely. Without that one play, Tom Brady right now owns the number one seed in the AFC. That's his greatest achievement, and he does have the two seed. He does have a bye, and he has a home playoff got, game. In I believe two. they got the two seed. Mm. In spite of Tom Brady. Oh, really? You mentioned. In spite of? Hold on. Hey, get... Where is his help? Oh. You want to talk about LeBron having whoa, no help? Whoa, whoa, He's got no whoa, help. Hold on. He well, has no What's left help. here? Can it, let, let... Well, 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 how about this? What, what happened in the last game? What did we just see against the Jets? Tom Brady had to throw 11 targets at Chris Hogan, who over his previous eight games this year had 14 total targets. And against Buffalo the previous week had zero targets. It came to you're dressing only three wide receivers. I got to throw 11 balls to Chris Hogan. That's what he's dealing with here? So this is you, his greatest achievement. So, Coach, you, you say Coach Belichick is this roster. Oh, he's given him so, Tom Brady such little help. Mm -hmm. The number five rushing attack mm -hmm. and the number seven scoring defense. Mm -hmm. Now, last I checked, yards don't win you games. Mm -hmm. Points win you games. Mm -hmm. And again, Tom Brady mm -hmm. has backing him up a top 10 scoring defense. Mm -hmm. So, guess what, Skip Bayless? What for the seven, those... Hold on, hold on, Skip. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Mm -hmm. For the 17th time in 19 years, Tom Brady's had a top 10 scoring mm -hmm. defense. But, hold on, you say pro football focus. They have all these gurus. Mm -hmm. In eight games, they only play 16. Can you know they play 16? Mm, in eight games, Tom Brady threw one or fewer touchdowns in eight of those games. To whom, Shannon Sharp? Ah, to whom? Wow! Nobody. To Wait nobody. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He, he wishes he'd have the three guys from Dorchester. See? He wishes. You see what you did? Because he didn't even have you the three guys from Dorchester. You see what I didn't you did. do anything. Now, when you talk about how well he, without the Miami mm -hmm. Miracle, who is he throwing to in the Miami Miracle? Mm. Those same guys mm -hmm. that he's been throwing to all year. Mm -hmm. But when he doesn't perform to a level that you expect, it's the guy's fault. But when he I, performed... I didn't even mention he had Josh Gordon for 11 games from week four up through week 15, and now he doesn't have Josh Gordon anymore. I said right? in half the games in which he played, Tom Brady threw one or zero touchdown mm -hmm. passes in half. Mm. But he's the number five quarterback in all of football. And he's the number two seed. How could that be? No, hold on. Uh. Hold on. Hold on. Now, you, not to get off, not, mm. not to get off topic, mm. but you criticize LeBron for playing in the NFC East. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh. the, the, no, the, uh, the Eastern Conference. Yes. yes. What am I going to do about the AFC mm -hmm. East? LeBron's lucky. You start the playing. season. You start the season at worst mm -hmm. five and one. Mm. You got Miami twice, you got Buffalo twice, you got the Jets five, twice. Okay, I'll give so you the, that. You start the season five and one. But then you have to play Patrick Mahomes, you have to play Aaron Rodgers, you have to play Deshaun Watson. Hold on. What, what happened in those hold three on, games? Hold on. Hold what on. happened? So who is he throwing to? What happened? Who is he throwing to in those three games? He couldn't have been throwing to Julian Edelman. Well, Ain't Josh no Gordon. way he threw to Philip Dorsett and a broken down Rob Gronkowski. Mm -hmm. How could he do that and outgun them? You see what you did, Skip? No, I didn't do anything. Yes, you did. you're, you're making my case for me. Yeah. It's amazing what he did in those games. He threw for 182 yards see? against Kansas City in the fourth quarter with nothing. Oh, with nothing. nothing. So, so hold but on. he did have Josh Gordon. What, hold he had on. Josh Gordon. If you don't Even mind, though you said Josh Skip. looks like he has a piano on if his you don't mind, If you don't mind me asking, how does the fifth best quarterback in all of football have three games this year in which he scored 10 points? Huh. I don't know. It, it, when you don't have anybody to throw to, nobody can separate. Who do you like? Help, help me out. T tell me one ride, wide receiver Tom Brady has going in the playoffs you like. Help like, me out, Shannon. You know who I like? Help me out. Okay, you, there's I'm nobody. Saying, You're I'm stuck. Saying, I'm You're dead. You what, hold on, hold there's you, nobody. Let me tell you who I like. 
Yeah. I like those receivers mm -hmm. that when Tom Brady got 43 points against Kansas mm -hmm. City. Mm -hmm. Those are the receivers I like. Mm -hmm. The ones he got 43 with, it the was, same ones he scored 10 with. It was a you miracle. See? It was it, a oh, miracle. Now it's a miracle. Yeah. Do you believe in miracles? Yes! Yeah, so <laughs> going into the playoffs, which team has the worst group of receivers? By far. Whoa, it's what, New England. What difference does it and make? They're the two seed, and they should have been the one seed except for Bill Belichick's blunder and at the could, end and of the game. Have, and they could have missed the playoffs. Oh. So what happened? If, could, could have missed the playoffs. No, they no I'm have. not saying they could have. Oh. But they could have been the wild card. Mm. So what happens if he doesn't outgun Patrick Mahomes? Mm. Oh, good. okay, then. See, since we're doing ifs. All I'm saying, Skip, those same receivers mm. that he went and got 43 points with Kansas City, mm -hmm. those are the same ones he got 10 mm -hmm. against. Yeah. The same ones. Well, not same really. That, that's not true because they've mixed and matched. They've come and gone all year long. So, so yeah. he didn't have – so who did he have? So he had he had uh, the 10, he had uh, uh, Josh Gordon against Kansas City. Mm -hmm. Did he not have Josh Gordon against Detroit? Mm, I can't remember back that far. I'll, 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 there yet? I don't I'm think trying to figure out how can a guy be the fifth best quarterback in all of football yep. and half the games he scored, he throw one, or zero touchdowns, and in three games he scored ten points. I'm well, just trying I, to figure how I does just, that get you? I just you? can't figure out how a highly respected website called Pro Football Focus could break down every play that Shannon Sharp doesn't have time to break down no. and yeah. come to the conclusion that he's the fifth best quarterback I can do what I on can performance break down. in 2018. So I, how you can know you what? do that? I need to go back to Savannah you, State. I need to go yeah. back to a Savannah State, yep. and they need to make sure I graduate magna cum laude mm. because all those tests I flunked. Yep. I should have got a higher grade because that's how they grade Tom Brady. Or maybe I should have those guys at Pro Football Focus mm. become college professors, mm. and I would have had a higher GPA mm. because this makes no sense to me. In eight games, hey, you only play 16, Skip. Mm. That's a large sample size, mm. right? You tell me 16 is a big sample size. Mm -hmm. Eight of the games, yep. one touchdowns or no touchdowns. Mm. Three games, 10 points or fewer. Mm. And he's the fifth best quarterback, mm. better than Luck, better Later than Wilson. Play. Better than Will a uh, Rivers. Mm. Better than Jerry Goff. Boy, he was really good in a lot of games. How, he was really how, bad in a lot he, of games too. How would he beat Patrick Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers and Deshaun? Yeah, how would he beat that when he, he didn't have no help? I don't know. So how would he lose no. to Detroit? How would uh. he lose? How would he lose to Tennessee? Well, that how defense would he lose was not. Jacksonville? The defense wasn't you top see? ten those days. Oh! Right? You know how it got in the top ten because it gets to play in the East. Oh, That's so how? so let me get this straight. Yeah. So in the eight games. When he threw one or zero touchdown, was he top five then? Yeah, even you agreed the other day. This is the worst. No, I didn't agree. Greg, you didn't agree. No, I agree. You, you agree. We're going to move now on you're flipping. to a different quarterback. Mm -hmm. And uh, Nick Foles and Here the we Eagles. Go. Are they actually Super Bowl yeah. contenders yeah. with him <laughs> as the quarterback? We'll discuss next. No mercy. In the other NFC wildcard game, the Eagles are a five-and-a-half-point underdog on the road against the Bears on Sunday. Nick Foles will start despite bruising his ribs in Sunday's win. Foles has led the Eagles to three straight wins, and he has proven himself in the playoffs. The reigning Super Bowl MVP has thrown eight touchdowns with only one pick in his four playoff games. Shannon. How dangerous are the Eagles going into the playoffs? They're a dangerous team, but I don't believe they'll beat the Bears. Uh, the Bears really? are loaded defensively. Number one scoring D, number one rush D, number one in takeaways, third in sacks, seven in pass D. And the one thing that Philly can't do, really do, Skip, is run the football, especially consistently. Um, and once the Bears and Vic Fangio, the defense coordinator, all, D, all teams try to make you one-dimensional. Everybody wants to shut your run off and then pin their ears back and come get your quarterback. So I believe that's what the Bears will do. Um, now, Foles has been unbelievable in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And what he brings them, Skip, is a confidence that everything's going to be okay. Yep. Especially after what he did in the NFC Championship. Especially what he, did in the, what, he, what he did in the Super Bowl. And then to follow it up, and basically they have to win out in order to get into the playoffs. And he does that. He's, he's done it. So he, they have a confidence in him that everything's going to be okay. But I just don't know if – I don't, well, I, I don't think they'll be able to run the football – and when you can't run the football against a team that's, that has number ones in scoring D and rush and in takeaways, that lets Khalil Mack, that let Hicks, that let Floyd, that let some of those guys mm. pin their ears back and come get your quarterback. Mm. And plus, he's banged up. Mm. So we don't know how healthy he's going to be. Probably put some medicine in that rib cage area, Probably Skip, and, uh, and, and have him go out there. But I don't think – I don't think can they be dangerous? Yes, they can be. But I don't expect them to win this game. Mm. So, right now, the Philadelphia Eagles have become the one team I would not want to play mm. in the postseason because they have turned back into a Super Bowl type of a force. 
and that's all because of the presence of Nick Foles. I would not want to be Philadelphia management if Nick Foles goes on yet another playoff run. Well, that's a different, that's into, another thing. That's puts tough. them into a really between the rock and the hard place position of what do we do? We let him go? What do we a rock do? Rock and a harder place. Well, oh, harder yeah. place, that is for <laughs> sure. And just for the record, I believe that Nick Foles and company are going to upset the Bears in wow. Chicago. And just for the record, I was half kidding with one of our security guards down in the lobby on Friday, <laughs> who's a big Philadelphia fan from Philadelphia, and I was just sort of surmising and putting two plus two together, and I thought, gee, wouldn't it be something if the Eagles upset the Bears, and then if the Eagles went to New Orleans and upset the Saints, and that hardest place to play in, in the world? And wouldn't it be something if the Cowboys beat Seattle and then went to the Rams and upset the Rams? And guess what? Oh, Lord. Guess what that would mean, Mr. Sharp? That would mean the NFC Championship game would be Philadelphia at Jerry World. And I got to tell you, I would not love my team's chances in that scenario because of Nick Foles. You, so, in other words, you want all your prayers answered in the first month of the 2019 year, mm -hmm. huh? Because well, that's, that's a prayer. Okay, I'll take the prayer of Dallas yeah, I, in the championship yeah, game. Exactly. But, but I would, I'm, I'm telling you, if it's Nick Foles at quarterback, my team already beat your quarterback twice, Carson Wentz. Beat him twice. Beat him in Philly to start the seven out of eight run and beat him in midstream yep, in Dallas. Did. And yep. it was a shootout. But my quarterback, I don't know how he did this. He threw for 243 yards in the fourth quarter in overtime, 17 of 20. I don't know how he does that. He can't throw. He's not accurate. Man, but I don't know. Stupid. I don't know how he did it, but he did it. And I would fear my team against Nick Foles because I fear Nick Foles in that offense. It just looks different to me with him operating it. He operates with poise under fire. I do not consistently see from Carson Wentz. Obviously, Carson Wentz is extremely talented. He's big and strapping, and mm -hmm. he can run a little bit, though he couldn't run quite as well this year coming off his big knee reconstruction. Yeah. But Nick Foles moves around pretty well at six. I think he's 6'6", six, six, yeah. I believe he he's is, because he's a former basketball player. That well, recruited. here's the thing, though, Skip, but also what they, they're going to have to look at is that Carson Wentz mm. has been hurt an awful lot. Yep. He was hurt in college. Remember, he missed like three or four games he his did. senior year in college. Yep. So we're starting to see a reoccurring theme where he can't finish the season uh -huh. on the field. Uh -huh. But that's, we'll, we'll debate that another day. Mm -hmm. Chicago can run the ball better than people think. I think they're no, 11th I, in I, running. I got that. Howard and Tariq Cohen. That. But here's the thing. The, the, the unknown is that Trubisky, his legs are better than you yeah. think. Oh, they're great. He's, he led the quarterbacks in the NFL in rushing. Yeah. You, uh, I yeah. think Lamar passed him at the end. Did he? Yeah, maybe he did. But, but, you but remember, all year he was But you remember, rolling. Skip, how he was doing yep. the Patriots. Yep. He, was, he looked like Michael Vick against the Patriots mm -hmm. running all over the field. And he almost brought them back against, against the Patriots. And they were on the one-yard mm -hmm. line from getting the ball, game into overtime with a PAT. So this, and, but I just don't know in a situation where if you can't run the football, how you go with a team that can come get you like the Bears can. And they started – see, the, and the Bears, they're thinking like, okay, this is 85, 86 all over again where we can come pin our ears back. And, you know, for the, and when they got to the Super Bowl, I think it was 06, mm -hmm. they had a, a tight defense where Erlacher and Briggs and Peanut Tillman, that could take the ball away. Mm -hmm. They could come get you with a goonlier and putting pressure on the I, quarterback, I Tommy Harris. So we're going to see, Skip Bay. I don't believe the Eagles can win. Mm -hmm. But – this could be a very dangerous team because they believe. And there's something that, to be said with a belief. that in, in Nick Foles. Yes. They do. Yes. So, over the three games that he's picked them up and started, he averaged 321 yards passing. He led the NFL in completion percentage because at Washington he completed 25 straight passes. That is hard to do. That Did it tie the NFL? It tied the yeah, NFL, yeah, NFL record. And then he had a flat ride to Aguilar and it was a little behind him and he dropped it. Okay, so do I have to remind everyone that in the NFC Championship game against the number one ranked defense, Minnesota's back, that was in Philadelphia last year, mm -hmm. he goes 26 to 33 for 352 and three touchdowns and no interceptions. And then against Tom Brady in the Super Bowl, 28 to 43 for 373, three touchdowns and did have one interception, but had a QBR of 89, which was better than Brady. So he outplayed Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. He was better. Those, those are two. Ain't no outplayed, he was better. I, I keep telling you, I can't remember in my time of covering the National Football League two better games back-to-back -back championship games, Super Bowl, than Nick Foles played at quarterback. Well, you, you have to, there has to be some value. It can't be an aberration because one year under Chip Kelly, he went 27 touchdowns to only two interceptions. There's something there 
that is really good. It's very different than Carson Wentz, but it's really good. And I don't think it was any silly, you know, any blip in the radar that they built a little shrine in Chris Long's locker to Nick Foles. And you, ain't no they. You know, Chris built that. Yeah, you know, but it sounded like everybody co-signed on it, right? Yeah. Fletcher Cox was co-signed. I think he contributed to all it. them candles. Yeah. Shrine. Okay. It was a shrine because they know that in Nick they trust. Yeah. They just do. He's their Saint Nick. So, I, boy, I would fear this team if I were the Bears because it's hot right now. And what is Nick Foles doing that Carson Wentz didn't consistently do? Spreading the ball yes. and finding the. Now, the thing is with Nick Foles, Nick yep. Foles throwing the ball over the top of your head. Mm-hmm. He's throwing the ball to Alshon getting big plays. He's throwing okay. the ball to Aguilar getting big so plays. So in these three games, Aguilar's caught – I mean, not Aguilar. Uh, Alshon's, Alshon's caught 16 for 301 yards, and Zach Ertz has caught 18 for 147 yards. But but they're, they're 50-50 on catches. Right. And then all of a sudden, the bombs away are going to the stud receiver, the yep. wideout. Hmm. Okay, that's dangerous. That's a formula for upsetting Chicago at Chicago. Well, the thing is that the Bears don't normally give up big plays. The question is, is Eddie Jackson? Because right now, he, he this year, he played a lot like Ed Reed. Yep. See, it's not good enough for him to get his hands on the ball. He's trying to turn getting his hands on the ball into points. He's trying to put the ball into the end zone. He's hmm. getting scooping scores. He's getting pick six. So yep. he's a ball hawk. Yep. Now, when they shut the run off and you have foes back there, so now that gives Khalil Mack. Khalil Mack's a man's I, I mean, he's putting 330-pound mm-hmm. mans on their behind mm-hmm. with one hand. So, and right. now you got him and Akeem Hicks up the middle, who had an unbelievable year. Mm-hmm. And you got Floyd. So it's going to be very, very interesting. That, that Eagles see. offensive line, it hasn't played up to its potential, but it is loaded with, with stars, yeah. right? Yeah. So if Nick Foles is – like 85% healthy. I don't know what he's going to be. Right. But yeah. he's going to have to be able to True. take some shots. He's yeah, going to oh, have yeah. to withstand some punishment. You don't build a shrine mm-hmm. for someone no. you don't respect. No. Uh, they're trying to become the first team to repeat as champs since the 03 04 Patriots. Mm. That would be impressive. It's not an easy mm-hmm. thing. No, not you would an easy know. thing to do. All right. Is LeBron coming back to the Lakers anytime mm. soon? We'll discuss what the latest is with Chris Bouchard. <laughs> no mercy. The Lakers are hosting the Thunder tonight here in L.A., but they will be without the King once again. LeBron will miss his fourth straight game because of the strained groin he injured on Christmas. He still hasn't been able to fully practice with the team, and the Lakers are 1-2 and two without him. We're joined by FS1 NBA analyst Chris mm. Broussard. Good morning. Good morning. What does it tell you that LeBron is still not practicing? Nothing really. I mean, he sh- they said he was shooting yesterday. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, if it's if it's a grade one strain, that's mm-hmm. one to two weeks. It's only been a week. If it's a grade two strain, it's three to six weeks. Remember, Steph Curry missed eleven games yeah. earlier three in the season. Weeks. Right, three weeks, eleven games with the strain growing. So this seems to be par for the course, mm-hmm. and it actually is would be a good time. You hate to see an injury, but this is maybe the best time of the year for it to happen because when you look at their schedule, seven of their next eight games are against teams under 500. They play o- wow. OKC tonight, which I think they'll lose. But after that, you've got New- the Knicks, yep. Minnesota, Dallas, Detroit, Utah, Cleveland, Chicago. How Every one at? of those games. How many are of those? Uh, they're at Minnesota, at Dallas, at Utah. So, I mean, those are obviously teams that you could yeah. beat, you could lose to. Mm-hmm. But it's a good time to see what really is around LeBron James. I mean, obviously, Golden State's the heavy favorite. If they falter, mm-hmm. I think the Lakers were in that group with Houston and OKC that might have a shot. Mm-hmm. But the, this season was really about seeing what you have outside of LeBron. And if they can play well in this stretch and win games, I think it could build their confidence in themselves, the supporting cast, and it could build LeBron's confidence in them. We showcasing mm-hmm. talent. Mm-hmm. Right. It's all about Anthony Davis. Well, mm-hmm. well and it's you know what? Because <laughs> Well, and I'll say this, though. Again, and I'm not predicting Golden State will falter, but not since Bill Russell's Celtics in 19, well, in the 60s, has a team even made five straight finals. Forget winning five straight right. or four straight. Right. Hasn't made five straight. Mm-hmm. Whether it's ego, yeah. injuries, it's a implosion, yeah, mental <laughs> fatigue. So if that happens, I actually think maybe they can make a run this year, yeah. maybe. Uh, so if Kuzma, who's averaged 25 without LeBron the last three games, if he continues to play really yep. well, 
Josh Hart. You know those two already fit around LeBron. Mm -hmm. Maybe they could show they can do stuff without him. Hmm. Ingram's the interesting one. We know he plays better statistically, it shows, when LeBron's off the court because he needs the ball in his hands more. Mm -hmm. And he obviously played well in their last win against Sacramento with the ball in his hands. He's a guy that could be being showcased because around the league, people are looking at him right now saying – He's not what we thought he was. But if he plays well during this stretch, it could show he just won't, isn't a guy that fits with LeBron. But if you get him somewhere else, he could do some stuff on his own and maybe be a star. So that yeah. could showcase him yeah, he for an AD trade or something. Mm. He looked real good with the Pelicans. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. Look, this is a, I, I'm not concerned about this, Skip, because I thought he would be out so, uh, uh, a significant okay. amount of time. I think the biggest thing is that we've never seen LeBron injured, uh, with the exception of that back injury. But this is – probably the most serious injury that he's had. Uh, and it's, you know, I thought it would take him three weeks. It wasn't going to be one day because normally we see him twist his ankle, Skip, but his ankle would touch the floor literally. He tightened his shoe up and he's right back on the court. That's true. And But yep. this is going to take some time, mm-hmm. especially because of the type of ball. LeBron plays downhill. Right. He's explosive and he needs that. And you do not want to have this thing linger. hmm Lakers, all they can hope for is to remain around 500 until he gets back, and then he'll bring you home from there. You mean mm-hmm. in the games without him, and, 500? 500. So overall, they'd still be, what, four or five games? That, that's all they need to right. do, just be 500. Okay. Mm. Yeah, it's like when you get to the ankle leg, you you ought to be on the relay team, whether the four-by-one or the four-by-four. Mm. When you got a good ankle leg, he said, just keep it close. Mm. I just want you to keep it close. Just let, just let keep it close. The, the Jamaicans. All they knew is they just got it till you say mm. he going to bring us home. Mm. LeBron said, just keep me close, and I'll bring you home. Mm. <laughs> That's all he wants you to do, Skip baby. Can you keep him close? He'll bring you home. Well, I'm looking at the West right now. It all matters. I don't know, man. I know what James Harden you That know. schedule is, but you got to admit, I got your right? schedule. I got your schedule. I'm also looking at the teams that aren't even in the playoffs it's, right it's, now. It's, and and I keep stay out of the playoffs, too. Wait a second. Memphis and Utah and Dallas and Minnesota and those Pelicans. I keep waiting for two of those teams just to catch fire. The Pelicans are all make it. capable. So we have to get OAD. They're all capable. If Miritich comes back to the Pelicans and Julius Randle's playing at a high level, unbelievable. I, I don't know why they don't. They just, should be better. They should, they should be, be better. Be better, yeah. yeah. And if Peyton, Alfred Peyton, will help. He he was a big loss. Say. I know, it sounds crazy, but he was their Rondo. Even Minnesota, they still have firepower. And from night to night, they'll have a big game, and then they'll be like, what? And Dallas, they got talent now. Doncic is playing. He's the truth. He's starting to figure it out. He's the truth. Yes, he is. He is the truth. And like, "Uh, why we do that? (laughs) I mean, Trey's been okay, too. But by the way, uh, uh, allow me to throw out that now sitting in the eighth spot, my San Antonio Spurs, Mm -hmm. and you – you. Took me to task when I said I don't think they're going to make the playoffs. I didn't say I'm, people are going to laugh when I say this. Derek White is the truth. They have a player now he's, named Derek White. You should check him he's out tonight and tell me he can't play Spurs basketball because right. he's turning into a Spurs type of star. They become he's taking unwatchable. games over. They become unwatchable without okay, Kawhi. Okay, well you can <laughs> you can make that case. But you see but, what Kawhi did last night, Skip? No, I did. I, I, don't know what, I don't know who you're talking about. I, I only know number Some two. Some guy with braids, right? Yeah, but all I know is that the Spurs the other night hung 46 Six. in the third quarter on the Boston Celtics. That's hard to do against the Boston Celtics. They play defense. That I, they're Kyrie not as good as they out. were. Yeah. He didn't close that game? Mm. Y'all know what? You, be, you got well, the best close in basketball. And he couldn't close that? It was over going to the fourth. Wow! Because how would he let that happen? Derek quite outplayed – Kyrie, I don't know how that happened. What? He just did. He just did. I don't know. So, back to LeBron James. This is why I'm surprised by this, because I've said for years he is the most durable superstar in sports history. So, you're talking about this is his first injury ever, and I can't compute it. I, I'm serious. I'm not being sarcastic about this. I just think he's Iron Man. And when he tweeted the next day, dodged a bullet back in no time, sure. basically. Remember, sheesh, yeah. right? right? Sheesh. Right. Okay. Well, then I accepted that like, uh, it's just a real minor tweak of, of his groin. Mm. And I thought maybe a couple of games, and I know you can laugh and say, yeah, but the grade, what, what do you call it? Grade, grade two. two is yep. supposed to be a three week to, to two weeks. weeks. Three to for, weeks. for most mortals it is. But, but I don't think in basketball terms he's mortal when it comes to injuries. He's been beyond injuries because he's never had one. 
it's like I'm going to knock on wood because I don't even like to talk about this because I don't want to invite one. But he's never had anything significant in right. his career. And he is a high-contact basketball player. Yeah. He just is. Yeah. I mean, he takes as much contact as anybody in the league. Right? About that. He, he, he missed eight straight his first year in Cleveland with right. a strained knee and back. Right. And uh, that's it, though. Right. But then he are took you, that time off in Miami where he – I mean, that was that, I think that was that time yeah. when he went, oh, that's he what you're yeah, when he okay. went to Miami. All right. And that was, that was just like overall wear and tear. Right. Yeah. Like he was just beat up and worn down. But he didn't have that injury. Right. He didn't have the shoulder or the knee yeah. or the back where it was – that's it, where it's knocked him out. I think the, the thing – is when he got the MRI, at least it wasn't torn off the bone. It wasn't right. going to cause him something to miss. You know, three when weeks. We heard a pop, he might right. have thought. Right. And the thing is, is that when you say significant amount of time, and this is a significant amount of time for him, mm. because basically the two weeks that you mentioned, uh, uh, Chris, in 16 years, that's saying something. A man has been that durable with mm-hmm. the style of play right. that he has. But three weeks, you come back fresh, you know, hey. Well, he'll fresh. be he, – that's the thing. It fresh. could help him because he, he'll be fresh. Okay. Get team for the second half of the season. But the problem is these games all count. And they are sitting in the seventh seed, and I predicted they would be the seventh seed. And, again, if it's the last leg of the relay race and he comes back – but, walk you walk them down. He, he, listen, on the other teams, that there aren't just going to be four runners on the other team. They got like eight runners. No, we'll pass them all. From that's, what, that's what you got. You got yeah. eight on the track. Well, yeah. you, you know what's interesting? When you The Lakers look totally different without LeBron. <laughs> There's more player movement. I don't even mean – I mean, obviously they're not as good, but I mean the style of play. There's more player movement, more ball movement yep. versus one guy kind of do- dominating mm-hmm. the ball. So it's interesting. Are you suggesting – that this, the fact that, like, maybe if this happens three years ago, it, it's not even a strain. Like, LeBron's just in such good shape that it's not an injury. You think this is a is, is I don't know, I'm just, indicative I, of his I, age? I, I, I'm, I'm being honest. I'm dumbfounded it's taken this long. Seriously. And, and he didn't even practice yesterday. He just shot. Right. So, again, I, I throw out all your grade one, grade twos because it's LeBron James. So, it's, I'm, I'm not saying he's getting old, but it, this is something that happens in year 16 where you say, we we got to deal with play. this. Right. we we got we to really be careful. If it was this. so freak how it happened. You know? that's, that's it, what, it, didn't, it didn't seem right. like something that would pull your like groin. It, right. But well, that's, how, like that's how this injury happened. Mm-hmm. Steph's, Steph's injury was kind of just freakish. Yes. You know, it didn't look like anything. Okay, so. but Steph Curry has proven over right. a long He's, time to be pretty fragile. Am yeah. I right? He's yeah. had all He's kinds of LeBron stuff. Physical. And once he gets a knee or an ankle, I know his ankle's nearly the cost of his whole career. Well, they just, shut him just down gone. Right. Yeah, they shut him right? down for two weeks. We got anything. Yeah. He got a hangnail. Oh, yeah, shut it yeah. down. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you want to talk about different in body types, Steph to LeBron, that, that's like different night and day, different. right? Yeah, but that's right? A, Oh, just keep it close, Skip. Okay, but keep it close in the West is going to be. Keep it close, Skip. Hold on. Did you see what James Harden? You, you want to keep it close two, enough that you don't fall to the nine seed. They're, they're, two, games, they're two games out of ninth right mm-hmm. now. Yep. And they're, but they're only four games out of first. Like the uh, West, yeah, it's, it's just okay. jam-packed. Did you hear what I just said? I did not hear. <laughs> what did you say? It does not. Did you mm. see what James Harden just did? Ten games where he averaged 40. He did. You don't think LeBron is capable of that? No, I don't. Are you at your mind, Skip? Baby? He doesn't do that. He just doesn't do that. He d- d- yeah, have you not watched the playoffs? He don't really do that. Huh? Have you watched the play? Did I you mean, watch the playoffs last I, year? I, I don't think 40. he's gonna go off on like that type of if, if we need, if we needed that, if we need him to do that to get <laughs> to the playoffs, <laughs> yeah. he will do that, Skip. Baby. Right. Well, He'll we don't like there. We don't like. We don't be a different way. We don't like to become that player. Yeah, but we got that in us. Mm. <laughs> Well, I think they're going to take another L tonight because yes. I think they're taking away. And then they're winning seven straight. Okay. I told you. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, just hold, just hold I mean, it in the road. Is that with LeBron or without LeBron? I don't know. I mean, he seriously. Be out, I think he'll be out most of that stretch. Yeah. So, really? I do. I do. I think oh. he'll. The I'm going to. I'm gonna, he misses New, tonight, New York, Minnesota. He ain't playing to the middle of, at, at the earliest. He won't be back until like 17th, or 18th, or or 19th of January. Well, then I'm going to say he's an old man. Say what you want to. Oh, we're going to call it what you want to. Really? Time. He's got to be safe. You're going to put that work in, though. Linger. Then, you got to be overly cautious. You would if, admit that. If he that. misses that many games, sure. I'm going to tweet sheesh. That's what I'm going to Okay. Gonna do. <laughs> Don't we'll do sheesh. We'll be ready for it. Uh, we'll see. Uh, Chris, thank you for joining us. Is Ron Shannon block him. ready <laughs> yeah, to well, I'm sure he follows me. Yeah. That Drew Brees yeah. is the real MVP? No. I'm going to be watching your Twitter. We'll discuss next. No mercy. 
and Patrick Mahomes have been leading the charge for NFL MVP most of the season, but Breeze was ranked as the top QB in the league this season by Pro Football Focus. He had 32 touchdowns, just five interceptions this year, while Mahomes led the league with 50 TD passes for the Chiefs. Shannon, does this make a case that Breeze should be the MVP? No, it should not even be close. This guy should probably win it almost as close to unanimous as we possibly can get. He's only the second guy in the history of the NFL to throw for 5,000 yards and 50 touchdowns in the same season. Mm. Now, he's one of three guys to throw 50 touchdowns in a single season. Obviously, Peyton Manning, 55, Tom Brady with 50, and now Patrick Mahomes. But in Brady, when he threw his 50, he had, four, I think, a little over 4,800 yards. Now, Skip tells me December, when mm. teams are supposed to play their best ball, mm. and the cream's supposed to rise to the top. Mm. Now, in December, this is what Breeze's numbers are. Three touchdowns, three interceptions. He scored 10 points at Dallas at a loss. He scored 12 points against the Panthers. And Pat Mahomes' last four games in December, nine touchdowns, two interceptions. Hmm. And the fewest amount of points he scored in the game this year is 26. And who had the better record? Whoa, whoa, hold on. Hmm. So one game. So we're going to take one game. One game. So let me ask one, you what, One game what? He had, okay, one team is 13 and what? what what's, mm -hmm. what's their record? 13 and 3? Another team is 12 and 4. Mm -hmm. Okay, who's the number one seed in the AFC? Hmm. They are. Okay. By, by, Default. Oh, oh that, that was a Thanks to Bill Belichick, they should send him a bouquet. Uh, <laughs> Kansas City averages four more points a game, almost 60 yards per game mm -hmm. more on average. And Pat Mahomes averages almost 50 more yards passing than Drew Brees. So for mm. me, it's, it's really, I mean, come on, Skip. Mm. We're talking about 50 touchdowns. He's 18 clear. Mm. He's 1,100 more passing yards mm -hmm. clear. Skip, this is not even close. Hmm. I mean, stop it. Look, this is not a lifetime achievement award. I don't want to hear, well, you know, Drew Brees has never won. And he'll never get another chance. That's not my fault. Hmm. Patrick Mahomes has had the better year. Hmm. There's nothing you can do. We, we've seen guys skip. We, we, we saw Aaron Rodgers. Uh, 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 Drew Brees is what, 32 and 5, you say? Mm -hmm. We saw Aaron Rodgers go 45 and 6. Hmm. There's nothing that, I mean, yeah. what are we talking about here? Okay, yeah, he has the highest. He has a high uh, um, passer rating. Mm -hmm. It's not the highest ever. Mm -hmm. That still belongs to Aaron Rodgers. Mm -hmm. Okay, he broke his uh, um, completion percentage. But when you look at this thing, Skip, it shouldn't even be close. Mm -hmm. 5,000 yards passing in a season, 50 touchdowns, the number one seed in the AFC. Mm -hmm. And with all what he's been able to do, it, this mm -hmm. should, I, I don't even know why we're even having this discussion. Mm -hmm. Offense averages 37 points a game. Mm -hmm. And in the games they lost, he put up, 40. I mm. mean, his defense gave up 40. Mm. Skip, this is not even close. Not even close. That's what you kept saying about the Heisman race. And then last Oh, you second. saw what happened. Yeah. You saw what happened. Mm. You I, saw what happened. I did. Kyler Murray won the Heisman. He That's won the I Heisman, thought. but mm. took that butt cut when he got mm. to Bama. <laughs> First player ever to go for 300 yards passing and 100 plus rushing against Nick Saban. And took, I'd say that's, and, but that's a did, butt cut. He man. did. So, he, what, mm. what, Cam Newton didn't do that, but Cam mm. won. Johnny Manziel didn't do that, but Johnny Manziel won. Hmm. Chad Kelly didn't do that, but Chad Kelly beat him twice. Hmm. Your guy did all those accolades. But guess what he doing, Skip? Got that garbage bag clean yeah. out of his locker on hmm. Monday. Yeah. That's what he got. So, I guess Shannon Sharp is going to rename this website PFF Pro Football Foolishness. Yeah. Right? Uh, right? Yep. Is that what we're going to yep. do? Yeah, because once again, I'm going to remind you. Oh, this is a committee of people, some with NFL ties, who do this for a living. Hell, they're, I got they're, NFL they're, ties. They're, you do, but you don't have time to break down every play of every Put game. Put two cases to do on it. We're going to start 2019 out right. Two cases, Mahomes win the MVP. I'm not going to do that because he probably will. What you mean he probably it's, will? It's, it's about splash plays. It's about social media highlights. No, no, don't do that. It's about best new bandwagon to jump on. And Shannon Sharp jumped on it at midseason, and he's driving no, it. Early. And he's looking over his Get shoulder saying, Drew uh, yeah. Brees, let me, let me be. Nope. Leave me alone. Come on, Skip. Two cases. We got to start so, 19, not 2019 off right. I'm, Two cases. It's my turn to go here. Turn. And Pro no Football Focus says we broke down every play and we thought Drew Brees had a little better quarterback performance overall than Patrick Mahomes. And Drew Brees, just for the record and for what it's worth, not very much, he broke his own completion percentage record that he set a year ago of 72% with the 74% of his passes he yeah, completed. A lot of, I mean, how many Woo! Pass, how many 74%. Pass did I, how many passes did Kamara Do those count? I think they count. Yeah. Okay. And there's another second-level stat on 
deep accuracy on deep passes from the pocket. 53% were completed by Drew Brees. Mahomes was third on that list. And then we go all the way down. Outside the pocket. Yeah. Uh, how about under pressure? Completion percentage under pressure. That can be inside or outside the pocket. Drew Brees was second in the NFL this year. And Patrick Mahomes was 21st there. And I will give you QBR, which is the more complete evaluation of a quarterback's I performance. Use, I don't use that. Yeah. Well, Patrick Mahomes edged out Drew Brees 82.0 to 81.9. So he edged him out by one-tenth mm. of a point. One-tenth. And why did that happen? Because Drew Brees was able to not play his last game while Patrick Mahomes had to play his last game to secure the number one seed. And he got to play the Oakland Raiders at Kansas City. And he had a QBR of 84 that day, which edged him a tick ahead of He was of already Brees. ahead. Drew but you Brees make it seem, led on. that all you make it, year long. You make it seem like you make it seem like the, uh, the Carolina Panthers were mm. uh, the monsters of the Midway mm. or the 2000 Ravens. Mm. I, I just told you Drew Brees didn't play his last game. But uh, last mm. time he guess what? Mm. Guess what happened, Skip? Last mm. time he played the Carolina Panthers, mm. field goals. Mm. That's what he got. Okay, so let's look at degree of difficulty. Drew Brees had to complete 125 passes to his only real target at wide receiver, Michael Thomas. Yeah. 125 passes. Mm -hmm. His next wide receiver in catches was Traquan Smith with 28. So 97 more passes went to his solo wide receiver that yeah. he could throw to uh -huh. Michael Thomas. And then way down the list is Ben Watson is tied in. You know tied yep. in position pretty mm -hmm. well. He caught 35 balls. How many did you catch? In your best years, you were catching like 150? No, I was yeah. catching best uh, – uh, 81, 87. Okay, 81. So 87, says Shannon Sharp. So 87. Ben Watson caught 35. But skip out. Wait a second. Travis ben Kelsey. Ben Watson in year 15. Yeah, Travis Kelsey <laughs> this year caught 103 passes. That's way beyond your best year. Way, way. 103, wow. and Ben Watson caught only 35. And then, wait a second. Tyreek Hill caught 87 balls. And, and then we go to Sammy Watkins. He caught 40 balls. So you want to talk about weapons? Okay. Did Patrick that? Mahomes have better weapons than Drew Brees? You better believe he did. What about that did. running attack? Yeah. It was pretty good. Oh, pretty good. Yeah. I mean, it, it wasn't Seattle's running attack. No, it but was pretty good. So, so you, you, I mean, yeah. I mean, because you, you do realize mm -hmm. what you call lost his best runner at the time. Kareem Hunt was the third leading mm -hmm. rusher in the NFL. Yep. He lost him. Gosh. Yep. And then the big stage games: Monday night, Thursday night, Sunday night, twice. Pa Patrick Mahomes lost those games. So, I don't know. I don't know what happened. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Was I don't Dallas, know what happened. Was Dallas a big stage game? Yeah. It was. It's not. See, it's not. Ran Patrick, into a buzzsaw. It's not. It's yeah. not. Pa it's not Patrick Mahomes' fault that he's mm. so good. Everybody want to watch him play. Mm. Drew Brees should have. See, if Drew Brees had won more games the year before, mm. they'd have had more televised games this year. Yep. My MVP goes to Drew Brees, and and Two he cases. does deserve it. I'm Two not going to do it. No. Why? Because I I think he's going to win. Okay. I think Patrick Mahomes is going to well, win. So, so that's just like because he got to play the last game. That's why. No yeah. skip. And it's not right because the better overall year with the higher degree of difficulty, Drew Brees. Skip. Drew Brees. He had a team in his own division mm -hmm. win 12 games. Mm. If you don't mind me asking, what was the best record in the, uh, in the NFC South other than New Orleans? Mm. How many games did Atlanta win? Were, were they a consensus favorite to win the South? How many, I don't think how, so. many how many games did Tampa win? Mm. Remember, mm. Uh, until they won their last game, they had lost every game. They started the season mm. six, six and two. Mm. Nobody saw that coming, though. Uh, yeah, no. Mm. Carolina started the season mm. six and two. Yeah, boy, they were hot. And finished mm. the season seven and nine. Yep. Mm. Okay, what about Atlanta? Drew Brees just ran away with that division. I was impressive. Even, yeah, you know, think about it. Number and one the man, seed. When the last time you saw a man throw wow. 50 touchdowns with 5,000 yards mm. and not run away with the division? Mm. Dan Marino, when he threw 48 touchdowns, which mm. was the record at the time, mm. he went 15. He went what? 14 and two. Mm. Oh, and uh, Tom, not Tom. Tom Brady. What did he go? Boy, you you give Tom Brady. Wait, 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 wait a second. You give Tom Brady or Drew Brees these weapons, Kelsey and Tyreek and, he had Randy and Moss. Sammy Watkins. Randy, he had Randy Moss. One he time. had Wes Welker. One time. And he went 16 and 0. Mm -hmm. He threw 50 touchdowns. Mm -hmm. Peyton Manning went what? 14 and 2? Mm -hmm. 55 mm -hmm. and 5,400. Yeah, with so, weapons. Okay, then. Yeah. So don't make it seem like Tom Brady never had mm -hmm. weapons, Skip Bates. Well, he did in 2007. Oh. That was one shot. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And where did that get him? Nowhere. Uh, what would you think? Yeah. He got it to the Super Bowl. Huh? He got it to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Well, he only scored 14 points. <sighs> 14 yeah. points. But with two minutes left, he scored the 14th point, and See, it should have stood up. Hold on. It should have stood How up. You, hold on. How you go from scoring 37 a game, mm -hmm. and then you get to the Super Bowl, the biggest stage? 
Mm-hmm. Coach Belichick defense only gave up. What they give up, Skip? 17? Yeah. They what gave happened? up 17 points. What happened to that defense? Tom Brady handed that defense a 14 to 10 lead with two minutes left. With two minutes with Tom left. Brady. Is that that's a with four Tom, point lead? Hold on. You're not even within field goal hold striking on. distance. You mean to tell me I got the goat? Yeah. I'm talking about you. Hold on. The you goat, call, but you had 14. You call it big case goat. Yeah. You didn't say lower case. You say yeah. big case. Yeah. Capital G. Yes. And I got and I can't get but 14. I can't get but 14 points out of yeah. you. Yeah. And why wouldn't Bill Belichick be able to stop? Eli Manning? 17 Eli points, Manning? Skip. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. They were a wild card team. Skip, let me ask you a question. They were on a wild Skip, card run. Let, hold on. What? Oh, I've been a wild card what, twice. What, they got no what, what'd that do? What would they go that year? Nine and seven? Hold on. How can you let a nine and seven offense do that to you at 17 the end of the game? points. Cost you a Super Bowl. Coach Be- See, Coach- Belichick cost them another Super Bowl. Coach Be- if somebody said, That's you know another what? another one. They're going to hold the Giants to 17 points. Mm-hmm. You say, boy, they're going to run away with them. Mm. They're going to beat them like 35 or 17. Mm. Yeah, but who drove the ball 80 yards in like 10 plays? I want to know why. Go ahead, 14 I want to know why, why were the Giants left? even in the game? Huh? Why were the Giants even in the game? Mm. They're good. They're low. Oh! So defense. he's not a GOAT. Defense. So if you beat the GOAT mm-hmm. twice. Yeah, with the luckiest pass. No, 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 Skip, Skip, while you do that. Mm-hmm. See, we were having a good conversation. Mm-hmm. We started our 2019 yeah. right. You were courteous. I was receptive yep. to courtesy. And then you had to ruin it. You I think a lot of so people well. believe Drew Brees should be the MVP. But I agree with you. The kid will, will win it. He'll so, okay. win it. Now, see, Skip, you it. say how you bet. Mm-mm. Oh, you don't want to – give me a chance to get my due back. I'm not going to just give it to you. You're not giving it to mm-hmm. me. It's tough over I've here. Been on, I've been on – hold on. You didn't say anything when you took my due. When I picked Tua and I lost. Well, that was your fault. Oh. Not, not my fault. See, I see how you but, do But you were the front runner the whole year. I, been the, I was the one who kept beating this desk saying, wait a second. I've been on my, I've been on my homeboy. Huh? You have. And who, and let me ask you a question. Yeah. Now, we got an opportunity to see these guys who go head to head. Mm-hmm. Who performed better? Hmm. Tom Brady or Patrick No, Mahomes? no, oh. no. I'm talking about your guy. Hmm. Against my guy. Oh, hmm. Tua this guy. Tagovailoa. Oh, oh. To that guy. against the worst defense in the history of college football? You're taking <laughs> credit defense. for that? Whoa, 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 whoa. Seriously? I'm just trying to figure no, out. No, no, seriously. Okay, it was 28 it was to nothing in the early well, in the how second did they get quarter. That? You got the best quarterback seat, the best quarterback in the history of the game in college football. You got a how top, did get five to 28 defense, nothing? top five defense. And then what happened? Uh oh. Uh oh, what? But after about two more quarters, Quinn and Williams is waving to the sideline. Take me Hold out. On, I can't chase him Skip, anymore. You know, Skip, you know good well you get a big lead like Take that. Me out. Empty, ca- empty yeah. yards. Oh. They meant nothing. Really? Three yards. So when, yards the, ga- when, the, game was, when mm. the game was seven nothing, got or the game was 14 there, didn't nothing. It? Onside kick? You never got within mm. two scores. Mm. Think about that, Skip, and let that sink H- How in. do you carry the worst defense in the history of college football to that? It, uh, almost, yeah. uh, That's a Heisman trophy. You know what happens? Is that yeah. when you get to present when you get to seven nothing and mm-hmm. you down seven nothing and you go three and out. Yep. And when it's fourteen nothing, you go three and out. Yep. And then the next thing you know it's twenty one nothing. As much as I love talking about college football, yep. we're gonna have to wait till next Monday and we're gonna stick to evaluating NFL quarterbacks. Uh-oh. He might not like this next question. Uh oh. Is Dak I, I below like this. average what? as a QB? We'll discuss where really he fell in those yep. evaluations uh-huh. next. <laughs> no mercy. Back to the NFL. The Cowboys are set to host the Seahawks Saturday on Fox. A lot of attention will be on their quarterback, Dak Prescott. He was ranked as the 18th best Mm. quarterback this season by Pro Football Focus. Dak finished in the middle of the pack for TD passes and yards, and he was ranked behind quarterbacks like Kirk Cousins, Dalton, and uh, Matthew Stafford Mm. on the list. Mm. Um, So Shannon has already kind of... Made some faces over there. Mm-hmm, good. Too high, too low, just right for Dak. So just so for me, because uh, earlier Skip was telling me, Pro Football Focus is made up of Hall of Famers mm-hmm. and people. I that didn't all- say Hall of Famers. <laughs> I said NFL Connection. And, 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 and what did they do, Skip? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, they study evaluate. tape all the time. Yeah. Huh? Uh, unlike play you. Play. <laughs> play to play to play. So they, said, every, they break down every play of every play. 16 games. So yep. who am I to disagree with them? Yeah. Yeah, you, you told well, you, me. You've already disagreed yeah. with them oh, no. twice. Oh, you no. said it was bogus. Oh, no. You oh, said it was no. pro football oh, no. foolishness. You told, you told right? me, say, are yeah. you say, oh, are you saying pro football focus said for pro football foolishness? Mm-hmm. I said, Skip, I wouldn't go that far. You're mm-hmm. like, nope, dude, you better not say that. Mm-hmm. So now you want me to go against everything. I don't know. What, what do you think? You're the Hall of Famer. Oh, I think, oh, yeah, yeah. I, mean, mm-hmm. I think this is just about right. Skip. About right? Yeah, just okay. about right. I think, right. you know, if you look at, oh, stats. You, you love stats, Skip. 19th in yards per attempt. Mm-hmm. Dinkin and Dackett. Mm-hmm. 21st in yards per game. Mm-hmm. 16th in touchdown passes. Yeah. What are they? Mm. They got him at 18th. 18th, not 21st, 16th. Yeah. That's 18 to me. 
Mm. I don't know how you get around that, Skip Bayless. Mm. Cause let's see, 21, 40. Yeah, oh yeah, that, that, that night. So yeah. now you like pro football hold food. Hold on, Skip Bayless. <laughs> hold on. 21st, 19. Yeah. That's 40, 16, 56. Mm. So 56, 3 into 56. Mm. Oh, that right, that about right, Skip. That yep. about right. 18, mm. 18 about right. Yeah, right, right. I can't complain. I can't complain. Mm. Hold on. See, you see the thing is, if they broke down the game like you say they did. Now, you tell me that all they do is sit around and break down tape mm-hmm. and watch the game. So they got a lot well, they of They don't sit around. They they sit up on the edge yeah, of the they, chair, well, man. Well, well, you know, they yeah. run it back. Ew. Well, let, 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 let's look at the football. Back and forth and back and forth. You know, yep. like, you, like you tell me, Skip, mm. I ain't got that kind of time. Mm. But anyway, let me tell you what I did do. Mm-hmm. I looked at this game. He scored zero points mm. against the Colts. Well. And take down, Jenny, mm. 16 games, a big sample size. That's what Skip mm. tell me. He said, Shannon, 16 games. You the mm-hmm. Pro Football Hall of Famer. Is 16 games a lot of games? I said, Skip, that's mm. a lot of games. That's, that's a large sample size. That's what you mm. tell me. In 10 of his 16 games, mm-hmm. Dak Prescott threw one or zero touchdowns. Mm. I don't know how you get outside the middle of the pack with that. Mm. He also holds on to the ball. Mm. I he agree. was the second most sacked quarterback in all of football. Mm. To so, Deshaun Watson. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. So... Mm. Skip, I, I mean, I'm gonna give him kudos mm. because I thought at the uh, uh, at the half the halfway point, Skip, he was below average. Mm. At least they got him in that middle tier. He's somewhere average. Mm. So with that being said, yeah, you know, mm. 18 seems about good. 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 I'm glad you agreed because I also agree with Pro Football Focus. His really? season should rank 18th. We can say either best or worst. Maybe you say 18th worst this year. That's play to play to play for 16 games. What? Because the first eight games were not good for Dak Prescott. Why did that happen? The first eight games, he had nobody who could consistently separate at the wide receiver position. He had nobody you could even name at tight end. Right? Because you didn't even know who these people were. Nope. And I kept saying, well, there is that guy from Baylor, the basketball player. Remember that guy? Yeah, I, whatever happened to Rico? I don't know what happened to Rico, but he couldn't play football, and he's out. <laughs> he's on the team still, but he's out. He has had no impact. Blake Jarwin started to come alive here the last couple of games. Mm-hmm. And what's the other guy? Yeah. Jeff Schwain. Jeff Schwain. Yeah, yeah. He got injured. Yeah, he got hurt, and he's still hurt. Broke his wrist. So he's had nobody to throw to. He had Tavon Austin. You said he's just a gadget just guy. A, yeah, just. just a gadget guy. And he had him for a little while, and then he got hurt against Jacksonville at Jerry World, and that was the end of him, and he has just come back now. So he didn't even have that. And going into the season, he lost his leader of the offensive line, his Pro Bowl center, Travis Frederick, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Gone. Yes. And he's been gone for the whole year. And it does, I'm, i got to knock on wood yeah. for him because that's a rough one. Yeah. Yeah. And Mar- our Mark Schlereth has gone through this. And yeah. he, he said, boy, I think it's going to take a while. Yeah. And it looks like it's going to take a long while. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you're down there. So your degree of difficulty has gone through the roof because you have nobody to consistently throw to. And you got new receivers in Deontay Thompson, who's no longer on the team, and Alan Hearns who had a moment here and a moment there. But the kid, Michael Gallup, he was he was still just a rookie. Now he's coming along. So for the first eight games, and again, they all counted, they dragged you way down. In fact, if you just ranked the first eight games, pro football focus, he'd probably be way down the 25th, 27th, Easy. somewhere easily. Maybe 30th. But then all of a sudden, you start to rank the last eight games. Hmm. And you start to pull back up. Because over the last eight games, if we had pro football just just break down pro football focus, not foolishness, focus break down the last eight, he would be a top five. No, he wouldn't. Yes, Stop performer, it. Performer. Performer. Well, I just told you, over the last eight games, he had the – third most completions of anybody in pro football. He had the thir- the fourth highest passing yards of anybody in pro football, and he had the third highest completion percentage. Of all the quarterbacks who played over the last eight games of the season, Dak went third, third, and fourth in those pivotal categories, right? And he had 12 touchdowns to only three interceptions. That's pretty great. I could make a case he might have been the best performer over the last eight games. You could you could undo it, but you, you could certainly make a credible case that he was the best quarterback in pro no. football, and they won seven out of eight of those games. Because if you wanted to be credible, you wouldn't attempt to make that case that Dak uh, was the best quarterback. Well, I don't know. Those the, those are high marks in every category. All up. So what am I? So if you don't mind me asking, what I'm supposed mm-hmm. to do with these ten games in which you threw one touchdown mm-hmm. or zero touchdowns? What am I supposed okay. to do with well, that? Well, again, a lot of times maybe Zeke's getting it in from two yards or three yards. I don't know. But in the 10 wins this year for the Dallas Cowboys, all I know is he threw 17 touchdowns to two interceptions, and that is good. Well, think about this, Skip. Right? In a league that's mm-hmm. built on scoring, everybody mm-hmm. wants to be mad. 
Yeah. How do you score zero points? Mm. You, you, if you can answer me that, how do you score zero points? Well, if you're that guy, you got a uh, coop and you got Zeke Elliott. Right? Zero. So, so help me out, Mr. Hall of Famer. Yep. Just three weeks ago, the guy that you said should have replaced Tom Brady as the Pro Bowl quarterback, his name is Andrew Luck, yep. went to Jacksonville against what's left of the Jaguars yep. and scored zero points. Yep. How do you do that, Andrew Luck? Because Andrew Luck's in a whole nother league from Dak Prescott, right? Yeah. How did that happen? You lost six to nothing? Six to nothing. What, 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 explain that to six me because I'm lost on that one. I don't know how it happened. I how do. did you do that? It I happened. don't know. It happens? But so does that you, mean you shouldn't have been on the Pro Bowl but, team? Maybe no, so. On. I don't know. <laughs> well, see what I'm about, okay, well, I, so, I, you I, know, I'm asking I, you I, to what, explain. If, you can't explain. Let, let me see. If I were to do this, I'm think, would Dak, would uh, Andrew Luck be 21st in yards passing for a game? Mm. Would he be, mm. I think he'd be second. Well, you asked me how, he, how, how Dak scored zero I'll in a like game. And, and that was the same quarterback who just the week before, before had scored zero in a game. No, that was two oh, weeks before. But anyway, yeah. hold on. I don't think Andrew Luck has had 10 games which he scored one or zero touchdown. Mm. Not when you got 39. Mm. Andrew Luck had a span in which he had more touchdowns in eight games mm. than Dak Prescott had for the entire season. Mm. What am I supposed to do with that skill? Well, what am I supposed to do with 10 wins, 17 touchdowns to two interceptions, How? averaging 262 yards passing, and have a higher yards per attempt than Andrew Luck. If you don't mind Andrew me. Luck has turned into a dink and dunker. How many, you realize that. How many, how many, how many uh, games did uh, the Colts win? Mm. Ten. Yeah, okay. It's not my fault that, guess what, that uh, 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 the Houston Texans mm-hmm. were 12 and 4. Mm. Okay, so 10 wins for Dak Prescott, 17 to 2 in interceptions, six losses, five to six interceptions, five touchdowns to six. So, so again, QBR of 71 in the wins, QBR of 30 in the losses. So he's been a different guy mm-hmm. in the seven out of eight streak, but, right? So, so yeah. but, uh, but my guy, Andrew Luck, mm-hmm. my guy now, yep. has a high QBR, mm-hmm. has a high passer rating, threw for more touchdowns, mm-hmm. has more passing yards, mm-hmm. and his record is just as good as your guy. Mm-hmm. I, I like your guy, Andrew Luck. No, no, sudden, no, 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 don't like yeah. him. I don't want you to like well, him. Well, I, all of a sudden, they, they drafted two stud rookies as the guard no, and tackle. Hold on. Yeah. You ain't have no problem with y'all drafted like mm. that. Oh, I'm saying. Oh, He's Zach Martin. It. What run is Zach Martin going and, in? And help me out. Who has, again, higher yards per attempt? Is it Dak or Luck? My it's guy, Dak. My guy. By far. Hold on. How do you explain that? My guy missed the whole Wait. season. So Andrew Luck missed is the whole season. So you got a new guy named Frank Reich as your head coach, and he's teaching him to dink and dak. No, 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 right? No. What Andrew Luck is just his, dinking his, and dacking. His shoulder yeah. was messed up. Oh. Did, hold on, yeah. my guy missed the whole yeah. year really? and came back huh. and finished. Going to be comeback player. Of I the year. love how you jump on these bandwagons. Don't worry, I, about I you. stay. I stay on my bandwagon. I, I don't get off. I yeah. just stay right there. That's why I like so that. So when your bus breaks down, some, I want you to stay broke down side the road yeah. with you. Some more okay. bandwagons to jump on. <laughs> yeah. Guys, we have a special guest. Yes, we do. Coming out right now, Nick Cannon. Uh-oh. He's here live in studio with us. <laughs> I like yeah. that. Oh, we'll talk to man. you what about up, what up? LeBron, hey. the Lakers, up, baby? best dress. We're going to talk to you about his here. new show. I need that. Funny more need that coat. I need this. It's cold in here. How you doing? Good to see you. No mercy. There the Mass Singer premieres tonight <laughs> on hooked, Fox. Man. Hey, I'm watching. We're joined Everybody's by the in. host of the yeah. show, Nick Cannon. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Fun Thank you guys for having me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That show looks like a lot of fun. Yes. In our production meeting today, we have a lot of questions. It yeah. looks yeah. great. So tell and us I have about no the show. answers. <laughs> That's the thing. It's the uh, most top secret show on television. Obviously, yeah. the way they put this together, they got you know twelve amazing A-list celebrities to come in and put on these ridiculous mm-hmm. costumes i mean head to toe and and sing and they they escort them in in a very top secret way if you have an entourage they have to wear masks too wow. uh they give an elaborate performance uh it gets critiqued by our panel and at the end of every show someone uh has to get sent home because they weren't the best singer of the show and that person is unmasked and you find out who that celebrity so is so will all 12 perform yes. each show no uh no nah, it's broken down okay. it's a, yeah so 
you, you you get a few performances each episode, and then obviously out of that, it's kind of you know that hierarchy system based off of like you know the best from this week, the best from last week, and then they go against uh, each other as well. Can you say how many athletes are among the twelve? Oh, can I say that? Yes. I don't know if I can say that. <laughs> uh. <laughs> there's there's definitely athletes there, and and that's been some, your your name Shannon was thrown out out there a couple. <laughs> you know, of, they, and they said they, there's a couple of guests, and they, they said you, no, he can't sing. <laughs> Oh, I can sing. He oh, sings. The, he can sing. I and, can. And Wait, but well, you can sing, but you can't Maybe dance. Maybe we just don't know. Well, I don't need to be able to dance in that okay. big old costume. I can just put it off on the costume. Yeah, you let you put some <laughs> dancers around you. So you never know. But then, uh, honestly, too, there's certain levels of singing, too, Skip. So there's there's some people who are like, oh, my God, that person probably has some Grammys and probably... Is, voices, and then there's some that just ain't the good. Do voices get disguised, then? Interestingly yeah. enough, so when you speak, your, your voice is disguised. That's what I think in the clip yeah, you yeah, heard, yeah. like, they, yeah. they alter the voice. But uh, when you're singing, it's up to the singer to give you their normal uh, voice or their disguised uh, voice. So, you know, it's a, it's a huge guessing game. But at the same time, it's also a singing competition. So some people are really taking this extremely seriously, and they're trying to be, you know, trying the, they trying to win it, and some people are just trying to disguise themselves. It is a fascinating concept. It is. Yeah, it is. Thank also you. fascinating in the city of Los Angeles, where you obviously reside, yes. Yes. is one LeBron James. Oh, what what, what do you feel so far, LeBron's L.A. impact? How do I you mean, like it? it it's, it's L.A. Bron. He, yeah. He's definitely here making it happen. I mean, unfortunately, you know, he, he's injured right now, but, I mean, the, the dude is the best to ever do it. He knows it. I mean, to put yeah, Everybody from, know the GOAT! I, I'm just saying. <laughs> Yeah, man. He's uh, and again, like obviously, there's always the debate of you know Jordan, Kobe, all this. But it's it's LeBron. It, it's his time. But, it's but his Jordan's generation. like prehistoric now. Yeah. It's like ancient, <laughs> ancient history. I say like a lot of the yeah. cats now they they never saw Jordan That's play, true. so they don't they don't know the impact that he had. But I definitely it's still it's still for me. It's, it's Jordan and LeBron, and LeBron is definitely you know taking over LA. I think this is a great way to, to, to cap off that legacy to come mm -hmm. up to this city and, and show that impact of you know what Hollywood brings, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's mm -hmm. to, it, to, to be a Laker, you know, is, it says a lot. I've watched you play in a lot of celebrity basketball oh, man. games. <laughs> so obviously you're a, bas you're a basketball fan and aficionado. Yeah, but I don't do well in those games. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, but your knowledge of the game is, okay, is great. Yeah, yeah, Is James Harden the best player in the NBA right now? Right now? Yes. I mean, I mean, just because it, December is amazing. And just, but he's your guy, right? I mean, been... I mean, one, he fly. He, all, he, all, he, he stay fly. Yeah. Uh, but then, yeah, man, he's just dominating on like 40 points a, a game. And just, just an all-around player being able to do it and you know and setting it off the rockets down there is making it happen mm. that's just my opinion right now you know like i i could i, I could jump on that laker bandwagon too because we want to see that happen and everybody's hoping that that's going to be what it should be uh, with lebron here but obviously right now so Hunter's you've already made the case lebron's the greatest player ever can you make the case your man james is the greatest offensive player ever ever yeah Ooh. Ever. yeah his coaches made that case yeah yeah right. i i out of ever, just like, ever. better than Jordan, yeah. better than Kobe. I can't go with that one. No. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, I mean, he's doing his thing currently right now, oh. obviously, but I, I don't know if I can go ever. Yeah, I yeah. mean, but when he gets the step back going, it's it's almost impossible to defend if he's yeah. taking that shot. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, that's his that's his signature move right mm -hmm. there. Like I, you can't go go wrong with that. But yeah. definitely, I mean, right now he's killing it. I mean, scoring forty consistently like mm -hmm. that is out of here. Okay, let's do one serious note here. Yes. You have been outspoken on various social mediums about the <laughs> Colin Kaepernick situation, yeah, impact. Yeah. Uh, where, where are we now? What, wh what feelings are you left with about the Colin uh, ordeal? I think, too, because Colin is such a, a personal friend of mine, too. I mean, I, my, I have some extremely strong and, and, and heavy feelings towards it just because I know the the passion that he has even still to this day as an athlete, not only just for the community, but just even for the, the game itself. I mean, I've actually worked out with him, you know, in, in New York quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And just watching him throw that ball every morning, you know, he getting up at five, still going, still having just that, that hunger and that passion, knowing that, 
he should be on a team, you know, and, and knowing that this is what he dedicated his life to and now he's dedicated his life to his community and, you know, he's been torn between the two. But to still see that drive, still see that vigor every morning to be like, yo, know, this is mm. this is what I'm about. Uh, and, and just to keep himself in shape and keep himself, you know, paying attention and, know, and knowing how much he deserves to be out there. Mm. So you think he still wants to play or he's moved on and transitioned to being this social I think he still wants to play. I think he's at the end of the day, he's a football player. You know, I mean, I, as much as, you know, as, as he cares about the community, as, you know, we've done a lot of work with the youth and, you know, with his foundation. And right. you see his passion there. But, you know, at the end of the day, he's a quarterback and, and he, he, want, he wants that, in, in my opinion. You know what I mean? Just, and that's why I say because I've had the ability of just watching, watching him throw that ball and, 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 and work out with him in the, in the mornings. It's like, man, this, this dude mm. deserves it and, and really has that drive. So what's step. your gut feeling? Will he ever get a shot again? He's, ah. not, he's not too old. He's not over yeah. the hill. He's not washed up. I, I think he might not even be 30. He's not. Yeah, I think maybe 30. It, yeah, baby 30. <laughs> I think if the decision makers uh, wisen up, they should definitely give him a shot. Mm. That's how I feel. But yeah. do you think that will happen? Yeah, your I did. Gut tell you? My gut tells me that they're not going to make that wise decision. I mean, uh, it's, a, it's a lot of, uh, you know, dogma and things that go go on that you know that they get in, involved just based off of people having fears uh I feel like Colin definitely made the right decision and and stood up but you know he's not being rewarded for that so, so if he doesn't ever play another down in the National Football League how will history remember Colin Kaepernick I think they will remember him for taking a stance and standing for something I mean uh even uh, I, I commend and applaud Nike for the way that yeah. they, they painted his picture and his legacy. Uh, we all know that he was a great quarterback, but for, you know, I think even more of a, a great cultural figure. And that's, that, that's nothing to shun at, you know what I mean? For someone to kind of step out and, and make these decisions for the community, uh, I commend him as a friend and as a player. Why weren't you in Drumline 2? <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny about Drumline 2, which is one of the best sports movies ever? Uh, it actually was supposed to be a television show that we were producing, and really? I made a cameo, and they switched it up. It wasn't a movie, so Drumline... I always said there is no Drumline 2. There was a Drumline film, and then we, I produced a a made-for-TV series right. that they only aired the first two episodes and mm. kind of spun it like it was a movie. You like uh, Eric Ebron's celebrations. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Yo, he killed, I, had to, I had to go ahead and repost that. They killed that. <laughs> they, it felt like, I, felt, I saw like maybe three or four drumline celebrations. That was the, the battle. They do the, the, the bass drum yeah. one, and they got a couple others. So it's kind of cool that to see the players kind of... Uh, Pay, pay the respects to the movie like that. It's, it's a good Love look. That. Oh. Yeah. Well, Nick, thank you for being here. Thank no really problem. appreciate your time. We're going to be yeah. watching. Yeah, watch it and, and hopefully one day being on the show. You never know. They, 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 you don't have to be able to sing to be can't on the sing. show. Skip can't Skip sing. can dance, but he can't but sing. Under a mask. I'm trying to win, so if I go on there, you know I got to get these vocals right. Yeah, got to okay. get right. I might pull a Bradley Cooper, might rehearse for like really? two years, get okay. some singing. There it is. Two okay. years I'm really thing looking winning. forward to this. The Mass Singer premieres tonight on on Fox, and we will be yeah. right back. No mercy. The Cleveland Browns are no longer the laughing stock of the NFL. They finished the season by winning five of their last seven. They had their best record in over a decade. Defensive back Marius Randall said about the team's future, quote, the NFL knows it's in trouble. The AFC North knows it's in trouble. We expect to win the North next year. We expect to win a lot of games next year. Hmm. Shannon, do you like hearing him say this? No, stop, bro. <laughs> hmm. I got two words for you. Mm. Jacksonville Jaguars. Mm. Weren't they supposed to set the league on fire, Skip? Wasn't the NFL supposed to be in trouble for because of them? Well, they got a lot closer to setting the league on fire the year yeah. before. Uh, mm. do, does he understand, Skip, mm -hmm. that you don't pick up where you left off? That you start all over again mm. and work your way up? And just because you had success mm -hmm. the last month and a half, two months of the season, mm -hmm. doesn't automatically mean you're going to have success starting off the following year? Mm -hmm. Dude, I, I can see New England. Mm. They don't do this talking and all they do is win. Mm. It's always the team. And they didn't really win. What did they really win? Okay, they won six, they won seven, what, seven games? Mm. They won seven games. What are we talking about? You didn't make the playoffs. Mm. And you're gonna talk about, oh, the NF, ooh, the league knows they're in trouble. Huh, really? Mm. Dude, you're the Browns. Mm. You're the Browns. Did yep. <laughs> yes. Yep. True. You went 0 16. You went 1 in 15. Yep. 
you probably won in the past 10 years, you might have won 35 games. Mm. And you up here thumping your chest up with the lead, boy, the lead NFL. Mm. No, they in trouble. Mm. AFC North in trouble, really, mm. dude. Man, stop this foolishness. And you did play in the AFC North. I did. Upon a time. It was the Central when I played. Oh, it was the Central. That's wow, yeah. Good point. Boy, that makes you old. <laughs> it does. Yeah. It does. Yeah. Wait a second. You're huh. yourself. So, who is the current Cleveland Browns new quarterback? <sighs> that guy named Baker Mayfield. Yes. yes, indeed. Is Baker Mayfield capable of saying the same thing that Demarius Randall said? Yes, he is. Yeah. So, I liked what Demarius said because I think it's a product of the quarterback of that team and the new leader of that team because this is all contagious. This has rubbed Can off. you get a coach first? Yeah. You know what? Thank you for bringing that up because that is the key question here. I loved how this team finished, and as Jenny points out, five of its last seven, yes. and it almost beat those Baltimore Ravens twice. It almost did. Beat them once in Cleveland, came close at Baltimore Correct. this past Sunday. Now it seems like all bets are off because that happened with Greg Williams as the head coach slash defensive coordinator mm -hmm. and with Freddie Kitchens. Freddie Kitchens, of all people, coming from nowhere to be the coordinator who really clicked with the quarterback, Baker Mayfield. That's correct. So to me, they demonstrated over a pretty long expanse yeah. of time, pretty good body of work. Two months. Yeah, that we can do this together. This all worked for us. We gelled, we clicked, we took off with this combination, right? Right. So why wouldn't Jimmy Haslam, the owner, say, you know what? I, I saw enough of that. I'm going to go forward with that. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you? But I don't think he will. I don't think either one's going to get strong Obviously, John skill. Dorsey is the GM, and he's got Green Bay ties, and Mike McCarthy is available. He won't splash. Okay. Well, is Mike McCarthy splashy? I don't know, I guess. I guess he's splashy on reputation, right. not on personality, he right? Super, yeah, right. He okay. Super Bowl. I, I got that. If Mike McCarthy takes us over, everything changes. The whole dynamic changes because Mike McCarthy is going to run the offense and call the plays, and I don't know if that bodes well for Freddie Kitchens. I just don't know. I don't think he would allow that. Right. And, again, the whole tone and tenor of the team changes because – Greg Williams is he's he's a little crazy, but like great crazy. Mm -hmm. And that defense reflected his personality. Well. He's a spit in your eye guy, right? Yep. Yep. And it took on that we saw some in hard knocks. He's a screamer and a yeah. yeller in a good way. Yeah. And, and, and I think they love playing for him and they played physical for him. Right. That they he brought a new just a new conviction to that defense. It, it was playing like it meant it. Well, right? you, you know, and, and well, it used to be when it was the Central, it was yep. us and, and the yep. Titans and yep. the Jags. And, okay. You know, Skip, you had to be physical because everybody played. The Titans played physical. The Ooh. Steelers were in that division. They played physical. Yep. Ravens. And so now in this division with the Ravens and the Steelers are trying to get their defense back. They finished yep. high, even though, you know, there are some games you're like, uh, do y'all even have a defense on the field? Yep. I get it, Skip. I get it. But you know – you don't necessarily – you never start off where you left off. It's a grind. It's a process mm -hmm. to start all over again. And I don't – and I think sometimes young guys, and I don't think Demarius Randall is young, is that, okay, We look how we finish. Well, he played for the Packers for yeah. a while when they were really good. Yeah. So he, he knows what that feels like. So, but you start all over again. The Jags thought that too. Jags, oh, yeah, man. Oh, we right there, man. We went to that. Look here. We were, what, five minutes away. From representing the AFC in the Super Bowl. Mm. Oh, we're going to be there. Oh, look at this defense. We man, well, hey, ain't nobody going. We didn't lose anybody. Mm -hmm. They okay. didn't change a thing, though. Okay. Right? They went forward with the whole coaches. Everything was exactly the same. Well, this would be a good thing to go forward with this, and I don't think it's going to happen. So all bets are off in Cleveland. Gotta, it's going to start over next year with I a whole another, new tone. I got another two words. Hmm. Yeah. Minnesota Vikings. Okay. Oh, no. How'd that work out for them, Skip? Not Ooh, well. they had an NFC championship game. Oh, boy, we bring that thing back. Oh, they're in trouble. We get us get a quarterback. All we need is a quarterback. But they changed quarterbacks, and they changed everything, and they would have been better off with Case Keenum. Mm -hmm. He was a better fit for what they well, did. Well, I wish they'd have kept it. Then, yep. Because he came to Denver and ain't do nothing with us. Okay, well, it didn't work because you were asking him to do too much. But when you gave How him – How you ask a man to give him $18 million and ask him to do too much? Well, he should have mowed the grass. He should have brought, brought food to, uh, to everybody. Mm-hmm. I'll bet if you, in their hearts of hearts, that Thielen and Diggs missed Case Keenum. Yeah. He just clicked so. with them better. Adam Thielen was about to fire on Case Keenum. Uh, he uh, was. Uh, about to fire on uh, he gonna tell Cousins. Them, Kirk, how are you going to tell video? the man? How are you going to tell the man how to run a route, Skip? <laughs> I don't know. You ain't never ran a route in your life. That, that got a little ugly. That that if I'm Thielen, little... I'm going to say, this is what you do. You need to go back and drop back five, and you need, even though you're going to throw it to Diggs, you need yeah. to look at me. 
It, it was throw it deep. A, a season I don't even want to keep thinking about. <laughs> but the future success of the Browns will depend on their new head coach. Yep. Looks like it will not be Lincoln Riley. Good. He has decided to stay in Oklahoma. Mm. Was that the right move? Mm. No mercy. It's time for our final topic of the day. Lincoln Riley is staying at Oklahoma. He agreed to a contract extension, putting an end to the rumors that Riley would go to the NFL. He's only 35 years old, and he's led the Sooners to the college football playoff in his first two years as head coach. Shannon, did he make the right move staying at OU? I believe he did, because if, if his heart is not fully in leaving Oklahoma, Skip, don't do it just because, well, it's an upgrade, and, you know, I'm in the NFL, and that's the, that's the pinnacle of, of coaching. Mm-hmm. Bruh, you got a good thing at Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And with the exception of he's probably going to have the most talent other than Texas in the Big 12, Skip. He has a great thing going on. Mm -hmm. And so, and they, it's not like college coaches don't make a ton of money mm -hmm. with the exception of uh, John Gruden. That's true. Only Nick Saban makes $9 million a year. Yep. Dabo Sweeney makes seven and a half, eight million. Jim Harbaugh makes $8 million. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. why am I going to the NFL for what? Mm -hmm. And so, have to deal with a grown man trying to tell me what he's not going to do? How did Lincoln Riley become this hot NFL candidate? Off what, exactly? He's a gifted play caller and game planner. I give you that. His quarterbacks were the last two Heismans. He yeah. presided over the worst defense in all of college football, and his game management and in-game strategy was highly questionable against Georgia and especially against Alabama. Why would he go so for know what, down that area of the field? I, I don't know. And he gave, I, he gave, I, I don't know. I don't know. But, I still love him for Oklahoma, so he made, obviously, the right choice. I think because of his offense. Offense and because well, the way they're playing offense in the NFL, it's a lot right. of college-based stuff. It's like basketball on grass, and so that's what they're doing. So he said, I'm going to hire me a great defensive coordinator, oh, and I just have this offense. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Jenny Taft. Join us again at the same time tomorrow morning, 930 Eastern. We'll see you then. Fox Sports, one of one. one.